bit of a cloudy day here down south of Huntsville, Texas. Down south of 45, we bring to you Huntsville Hornets taking on the Kingwood Park Panthers as the Huntsville Hornets looking to even up the season series while also trying to break a two-game losing streak. After losing the last two games against Lufkin this past week, they look to get back to their winning ways. Hello, everyone. Colin Neal alongside me. This go-around is Christian Cortez. Christian, glad to have you. Just, uh, well, how you been, man? This is the first time uh, you've been on the call with me. Uh, you've been to my camera, man, but now you're right beside me. How's, how's it going? Yeah, doing well. Good weather. Just getting back to it, and hopefully the wind stays up for this day. <laughs> the wind. Uh, yeah, I mean, the weather has just been, like, <laughs> really – like a roller coaster. I mean, I mean, the w I mean, the weather canceled our slow pitch uh, games again on Monday. So, yeah. but uh, you know, I guess we'll take it for at least for today. As the sun beams through, we now start the countdown to first pitch presented by Bill Fick for just about under a little under 20 minutes before we get underway. This re once again recapping last week, Huntsville Hornets lost a close one on Tuesday a week ago to Lufkin at Lufkin three to nothing. It was just that one big, it was just that one inning where the Panthers scored three runs in the bottom of the first against Van Brady. Then Van Brady held him, held him to scoreless inning after scoreless inning after scoreless inning. And it just seemed like the bats just could not get anything. Uh, they were able to put runners on base, but they weren't just able to cross, make them cross the plate. Yeah, just unfortunately, you know, no yet to get in that, get in the third base on that one to right center. Just had to try and get something on the ground, get the runner in, do something, but you know, it's a new day. You regroup, you find what you do, and you get going today with Van on the mound. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kingwood Park is no slouch. They're second in the district at this uh, time as we are about to get things underway here. And about, like I said, in about 15 or tw 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how these senior day activities go here in Kingwood Park, it, it is indeed senior day for the Panthers. And then you look at Friday night and. 10 to 5 loss, just uh, just one of those games where again uh, one big inning happened and you somehow couldn't find a way to recover. They the Lufkin Panthers scored eight runs in that top of the second inning against Colton Gilbert, and then they finally got out of it. The Hornets were able to scrape together a few runs, but Lufkin found a way to respond back in. Just another one of those games like we talked about, Christian, uh, before even, not just today but beforehand, where they let one big inning get away from them. Yeah, you know the thing with baseball, it's hard to get those three outs. It's really hard to get those three outs once you get on top. But, you know, Huntsville just doing a good – they've always been able to come back, just figure out a way, just just try and get those three outs. But we'll see today. As you said, it's always the one inning. But they started off well during Lufkin last game, just just got away with that yep. one. But just try and stay in it, take every pitch at a time, and figure out the ways. Looking at the district standings real quick for District 16 in – Texas 5A, if it uh, pulls up on my screen. I guess it's not going to pull up on my screen. It is what it is. Uh, but like I said, Kimo Park is second place. Lufkin is first. Porter is third. And Huntsville is fourth, while Nacogdoches and Dayton each have one win in the fifth and sixth place spot. So at this point, it seems like playoffs are are, are well and truly going to go – go to Huntsville's way, whether it's against Hallsville again or it's against White House. But one thing's for sure, uh, Christian, despite getting swept by Lufkin, the fact that they swept Porter, that's going to be big down the line. Yeah, you know, we've been talking about this so many times. You know, beating Porter, it's been helpful down the line. If they tie, they take that series in that way. So just try and, you know, start with K-Park. Get the series win, keep it moving, and just doing a good job. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean it's just gonna. It's just one of those things. You said it. You said it yourself. It's simple. It's baseball. Like sometimes yeah. things are gonna happen where you can't explain. Like, you know what? <laughs> that happens. And you know, baseball is just that sport where a lot of luck, a lot of factors come through the uh, good old thing called luck. Yep. And some points Huntsville has gotten lucky. At some points Huntsville has gotten unlucky. And I think tonight, Christian, they're gonna have to hope that luck's on their side, especially against a very good side like Kingwood Park. You, you've, you've gone with me. You've been with me almost all of district play. What does Huntsville have to do in order to try to break this back-to-back uh, -back losing streak they're on, and also trying to beat Kingwood Park tonight to set up the rubber match on Friday? Just try and prevent errors. Try and not get anything, keep everything in front of you, and then on batting, just try and keep the count going. Don't try and go three up, three down, 
and just fight off any pitch, but just doing a good job. And base running, knowing to go, everything doing well. But there's a little wind going left to right here today with the flag movement. So be aware with that when you're in the outfield. And you also are going to be again without Nolan Hunt tonight. He's uh, he's probably going to be out for this week at least um, due to an injury. And so you're going to have Carson Woods DH in tonight. You have Austin Taylor moving up to the fifth spot. But those lineups, will, the full lineup will come your way in just a few minutes. Coming up next is my convo with head coach Justin Jennings. This is the coach's convo presented by Bilfick Ford. This is head coach Justin Jennings and I just about 30 minutes ago. All right, welcome to the coach, coach's convo. Colin Neal alongside head coach Justin Jennings. Coach, uh, y'all got a swept over this past week by Lufkin and just your quick thoughts on that and then uh, how are y'all going to attack tonight against Kingwood Park to set up a rubber match on Friday? Yeah, we just we just got to be better offensively, man. That's, that's, that's all there is to it right now at this point. Um, we're struggling to manufacture runs. We're struggling to get, you know, base hit with guys in scoring position. And, uh, you know, we didn't throw it real well on Friday. We had one bad inning and, uh, you know, just too much to overcome with where we are offensively. So, um, you know, we know what we need to do this week. Uh, it's a big week for us as far as seeding purposes. Um, you know, the next three are, uh, you know, one's ahead of us and the, the next two are behind us. So uh, we need to try to jump these guys. And in order for us to do that, we're, we're going to have to be a lot better offensively this week than we've been the last few weeks. Oh, what is it about your offense that you want them to get better? Is it like the stringing together the hits? Is it just making the right decisions? Just uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, answering. we, you know, we've in the midst of our struggles, we've swung it you know, some breaking stuff that's been pretty far out of the zone, and we, we need to eliminate that. And then we need to string together some hits with guys in scoring position. Uh, we've done a really good job of manufacturing runs, but we've been telling them for weeks now, like, you know, hey, we don't we don't want to trade runs for outs. Like, we have to stop doing that. You know, it's good to manufacture some here and there, but right now we're just not good enough offensively to be trading runs for outs. So, we get a guy on second and third, we need to get a base hit and trade, you know, two runs, and then that guy goes to first base. And, you know, we just got to do a better job of that. Uh, defensively, uh, y'all been uh, y'all been pretty sound, but this Kingwood Park team is really loves putting down that uh, bunt, the small ball kind of thing. Uh, just how are you going to be looking for your guys to attack that tonight? Yeah, they're they're really tough. They make it really hard on you. Uh, they 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 like the small ball. They like to run. They like to bunt. And then they've got some guys in the middle of the order that can really swing it, and really drive and run. So they put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, the main thing for us is we just got to get ahead. We got to get ahead in the count and allow us to uh, to throw what we want to throw instead of getting situations where you know they know what's coming and their base runners and hitters know what's coming. So uh, they they're pretty solid one through nine and they they do a lot of really good things. So. Uh, we'll have to be we'll have to be really good tonight. Uh, you, well, you mentioned it. I mean, Van's been solid. It's just sometimes he would get himself down and like deep into counts, and then that allows for runners to get on base via the walk, or it gets them in hitters' counts, and then hitters are able to take advantage of that. And you, you said it yourself that that one big inning is what uh, cost y'all on Friday night. Just what do you be? What's just going to take to prevent that one big inning? Because that's been something that's been consistently, uh, you know, kind of like the. Uh, Achilles heel is just that one big inning and then the bats just can't seem to find a way to get past it or try to scrape together a few runs just but even after y'all get that even after that beginning y'all will hold them down hold the team down to few and few runs sometimes even just holding them scores the whole way just like what kind of mentality do you need do you need your guys to have when when it comes to that adversity well I think I think you know that's the tough part about coaching is you know, when you get in that situation and something doesn't go your way and something doesn't go right, you know, you got to be able to wash it. You got to be able to clear your head and you got to be able to compete, you know, harder than, than you have up to that point. And that's what we try to tell our guys. We just tell them to, you know, hey, we got to compete hard every single pitch. We can't take any pitches off. You certainly can't take any pitches off when you're uh, when you're behind in the count or behind in the game. So uh, it's just more of a mentality thing. And, you know, we, we've done a good job at times, but there's times where we need to be able to move on a little bit quicker and wash something and, and get back in it and compete tougher. So hopefully we'll do that tonight. We've had opportunities every Tuesday night. Um, you know, our guy's been pretty good. So we'll, we'll uh, hope he's on and gives us a chance, and then hopefully we can string something together offensively. Well, we've had Thursday night games, and now we have one Thursday night game. Now we have a Wednesday night game due to the uh, weather that didn't come. Does that uh, help you all to have that one extra day to prepare? Uh, I mean, I don't think it really matters at this point. I mean, we're, you know, we're 23 games into it, you know, uh, 
is the haze in the barn, so to speak. Um, you're just trying to, you know, trying to improve upon your struggles a little bit. And, uh, you know, you are who you are at this point. You know, we're one of the, you know, we're one of the lower teams offensively. Um, we're just trying to get a little bit better each time. And it's like we've talked about for weeks now, we still haven't played our best ball yet. So um, we're just looking to improve and try to get to that point. And if we can, we're going to be all right. All right, Coach, thank you for your time as always. Appreciate it. I'm Colby Lovell, 2020 world champion header, seven-time NFR qualifier. I'm Ricky Canton, 15-time NFR qualifier, and currently hold the world's record in the cap open. I'm Cody Johnson. I'm a platinum recording country music artist, cowboy team roper. And I'm no bull bill, and I sell trucks. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, at least I sell them to the cool people. Country music is different than other music genres. Our artists sing about family, friendship, the ups and downs of this old world, and living this life. Country music tells the story of us. 101.7 KSAM is your hometown radio station. Play in today's best country and all your favorites. And you can have this hometown connection right there on your smartphone with the all-new KSAM mobile app. It's in your iPhone and Android app store right now. And we also have direct links on our website. KSAM1017.com. At Mid South Fiber Internet, we understand the importance of quality service. We don't just work here, we live here too. Helping our communities any way we can. Connecting communities one line at a time. Working around the clock for you. We are committed to serving. Committed to our communities. We are committed to you. Mid South Fiber Internet. Local, reliable service you can count on. Sign up today at MidSouthFiber.com. Huntsville wakes up to the all-new KSAM Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy. Get a positive start on your workday with local news, weather and sports, and some inspiration and laughs to warm you like a hot cup of coffee. And now you can join the daily conversation with Brian and Tracy by calling or texting the KSAM listener line at 936-295-4102. Come on, neighbor. The all-new KSAM Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy on 101.5. KSAM. Affordable Plumbing Incorporated in Huntsville is a proud supporter of Hornet softball and baseball. Family owned and operated since 2000, Affordable Plumbing serves the plumbing needs of Huntsville, New Waverly, Trinity, and other surrounding areas. The company is backed by years and years of experience and strives to support the community in a courteous and professional manner for all your plumbing needs. Call them at 936-291-7886. Again, that's Affordable Plumbing at 936-291-7886. Sting them, Hornets! Find us on social media on both Facebook and X at KSAM1017. Also be sure to subscribe to the 101.7 KSAM YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything going on with your hometown radio station. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation broadcast network powered by KSAM Sports. Let's wrap, go ahead and wrap up the... Bill Fickford post, uh, not post game, sorry. First down, first count countdown to first pitch. I can't talk right now. It is, I'm, I'm a little thrown off because it is a Wednesday night, not a Tuesday night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here are the uh, starting lineups for both sides. First for the Kingwood Park Panthers, the home team. Leading off for them is going to be number eight in center field, Blake Heckman. Batting second, wearing number four in, at third base, Kevin Rios. Batting third, wearing number 27, Michael Santiago. He'll be at second base. Batting fourth, the cleanup hitter for the Panthers, wearing number 15, the designated hitter, Aiden Murray. Batting fifth, wearing number 29, behind the plate at catcher, Nate Eveler. Batting sixth, wearing number nine at first base, Nolan Kruger. Batting seventh, wearing number 24 in left field for K Park, Jackson Lindsay. Batting eighth, wearing the numero uno, number one, Cody Jenkins. He'll be in right field. And rounding up the order for the Kingwood Park Panthers at number Batting ninth, wearing number 14, Nick Sloniker at shortstop. And on the mound tonight for the Kingwood Park Panthers is number 23, Andrew Hennings, the left-handed pitcher. Kingwood Park is led by head coach Chris Buchner, assisted by Blake Ford, Earl Campbell, and Brad Kisser. Once again, it's going to be Heckman, Rios, Santiago, Murray, Eveler, Kruger, Lindsey, Jenkins, Sloniker, and Hennings on 
the bump. All right, let's now go ahead and look at your starting lineup tonight for the Huntsville Hornets. It goes as is right there on the screen. So if you keep it score at home, here's your chance to jot that down. Right quick, at second base, John Stanley led left field, Gage Doris, no Nieto back behind the plate. Carson Woods getting the start at designated hitter. Austin Taylor moving up in the lineup in the fifth spot in the order. He'll be in right field. Van Brady hitting six in on the mound for the Hustle Hornets tonight. In center field is Johnny Waddell. He's bat seventh. At first base is Brian Parker Jr., the lefty. And rounding up the order for the Huntsville Hornets is at third base. Jackson, Slater, and Holden Langley will be just defensively at shortstop this evening. Huntsville Hornets, of course, led by head coach Justin Jennings, assisted by Cole Bohanan, Jonathan Gorey, and Justin Stanley. And that is your lineup for the Huntsville Hornets. Christian, before we head the break, what are your keys to the game presented by Bill Fick Ford? Uh, try and start off early. You know, you've been facing off, you've been home, and that's been affecting you when they get off to an early start. Try and get to an early start. Get as many pitches as you can with a pitcher. Keep everything on the ground. It's baseball. It seems easy, but it's not. So just try and keep everything on the ground. If you pop up, that's not what you want. Try and keep things on the ground defensively. Uh, offensively, keep things on the ground. Defensively, try and prevent errors. Keep everything in front of you. Make easy plays and do well. National Anthem about to get underway, and that signals near the start of this one here in Kingwood Park High School. We'll be right back right after this. First pitch coming up next. At all, please rise and remove your hats for the playing of the National Anthem. And we welcome you live here at Kingwood Park High School on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports, presented by Wiesner of Huntsville, home of the bottom line. Starting pitcher for the Kingwood Park Panthers is going to be number going to be number is going to be Andrew Hennings. And uh, don't think this is a pitcher that the Hornets have faced, but it's like you said, Christian. You made a great point. They have to get off to a good start. Yeah, just try and get deep into the count, see a couple pitches, see what you like, and keep things on the ground. Make defense have to make a play instead of getting a pop-up, and it's an automatic out. Folks, tonight's video broadcast is being presented in 2K Quad HD with a 4K Ultra HD enhanced presentation. Closed captioning is also available for the hearing in here. Glad to have you join us from wherever you may be tuning in on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network powered by KSAM Sports on the 101.7 KSAM YouTube channel. Of course, if you haven't already, be sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date on when the next broadcast is on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network powered by KSAM Sports. Josh Stanley will lead things off for the Huntsville Hornets. 
He has really come alive, especially since he got called up. Christian, I believe you were there with me as well whenever he made his first varsity start, and he has not given head coach Justin Jennings a good reason to send him back down. Yeah, good quality guy at second, hard hitter, a good job. And he's been doing well, as you can tell, as he's leading off. First pitch from Hennings to Josh Stanley, and we are underway. First pitch at 7.01 p.m. That pitch is, in, is low for a ball, and we are underway here at Kingwood Park. Yeah, just good eye. Just take the pitch, find what you want. Next pitch from Hennings to Josh Stanley. That's high and in. Stanley in no rush to get things going here. 2-0 pitch. That finds the zone on the slow slider. Look, didn't really have that much break, but it's in there for a strike. Two one pitch to Stanley. That's a little high and in for ball three. A hitter's count three one. With Gage Doris waiting in the on deck circle, Henning's not really wasting any time. He winds up. He goes on a three one. Finds the inner half of the plate. Strike. Now uh, you see what he likes. He's going inside, so just try and sit that and pull it. As the wind blows here, full count pitch. Grounder up the middle, Hennings feels it cleanly and throw on the first in time for the first out, one away. Little left fielder number seven, Gage Doris. So just good quality AB, just fortunate went straight to the pitcher, make an easy play at first. But you know what he likes, he likes to go inside on you to try and get you to ground out. And then here's Gage Doris, the left-handed hitter. With the way the wind's blowing here, uh, Christian, this might favor him pretty well. First pitch is a grounder right side. It will go foul. Hennings, right-hander goes, 0-1. Outside, gets behind the catcher. Make it one and one. Hennings is on the bump for Kingwood Park. Evler is behind home plate. Kruger is at first. Santiago is at second base. Rio is at third. Next pitch. It's low on the curveball for ball two. And at shortstop is going to be Sloniker. In left field is Lindsey. In center field, it's Heckman. And in right field to round up the defensive alignments for Kingwood Park is Jenkins. 2-1 pitch. That's low and outside for ball three. Another hitter's count. And uh, Huntsville putting up some quality at-bats to begin this game. Yeah, doing a good job not chasing anything and trying to get something in the field. 3-1 finds the zone on the higher upside corner of the zone for strike two. It runs the count full. Back-to-back -back batters getting full counts. We'll see what happens here this time. It's foul. Did see Eveler set up, set himself outside the play a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's getting favored on those calls on the outside and even with Stanley with the inside, so probably trying to attack right there. But Gage doing a good job fighting. He steps in on this full count pitch from Hennings. Ground ball right side, that's through for a base hit. Easily into the outfield, it's fumbled by the right fielder. Gage thought about going for two, but he will do the smart thing and hold back. It's a three, base hit for Gage Doris, first hit and base runner for the Hornets. Yeah, quality AB gets right in the gap for Gage. Simple in textbook. They'll send the catcher, Noah Nieto, to the plate. He's been swinging a good stick as of late. Had that triple against Lufkin a week ago. Pitches a liner in the right field, and it looks like it's closing in on the right fielder, and he makes the catch for out number two. That was 
Jenkins in right field. Was moving in on it a little bit, but decided to retreat back and wisely makes the right decision. Good swing, though. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. You know, trying to tag early, get on, move, advance the runner. Just went straight to right field. Two outs now, runner on first for Carson Woods. He steps in, making the start at designated hitter tonight for head coach Justin Jennings. First pitch from Hennings. It's low for a ball. Looked, looked good from my perspective, I'm not going to lie, but we'll, we'll take that. The Huntsville Hornets will take that. Okay, you know, I thought Evler framed that pretty well, but we will take what we can get. 1-0 <laughs> -oh pitch. That's low again, and not as controversial this time around. It's 2-0. Oh. I think the Hornets are doing exactly, though, what they should do is, you know, just quality at bats, pick off the first is not in time. Yeah, you know, just see some pitches, see what you like, see what the pitcher is attacking in Hennings, and just go with that. So far, the only person to get on is Doris, the lefty. See if his righty can get on. 2-0. That's at the top of the zone for a strike. Another pickoff attempt. Two one pitches in there on the inner half of the play at the low corner of it exactly. So it runs the count to three and two. Or is it it's two and two, two never? And two. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, that's not right. Go down the second and Doris is safe. So that's a stolen base, so that puts the puts a runner in scoring position for Gage Doris for Carson Woods, excuse me. And the coaching staff for K Park is having some discussion. And they're going to go ahead and argue the call. Looked pretty looked pretty good. I, had, I went down I looked down for a moment to make sure the stream was still going. For my eyes it looked like you know Defensively, second base, I believe. Try to get down on him. Gage kind of, not quite a swim move, but he dodged the tag and got his left hand in. Well, that's probably what the uh, field umpire is saying to head coach Chris Buchner. Well, in high school, they have they don't have video review. Oh, no. So the call stands. Once again, counts three and two, two outs. Carson Woods. Imagine if they did. Did if what? Had video review in high oh, school. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Imagine a uh, robo zone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think we'd be here for a while. Yeah. Full count pitch from Hennings coming up. Woods swings at it. Ground ball right of the line. It's fair down the line. Doris will easily score. Carson Woods trips up for a moment. He's going to have to slide heading to second. He does. He's in there safely. one nothing. Huntsville Hornets gets off that fast start like you said. Exactly. Getting on right away. Doris being aggressive, getting to second on the stolen base. And Woods piecing it to left. The right fielder getting an RBI. Taylor. But that's three batters, full counts. Doing a good job getting some pitches in from Hennings. Just keep attacking. Like I said earlier, it's hard to get that third out. Austin Taylor now steps in for the first time tonight, moving up to the fifth spot in the order. Time is going to be called. And that's where that stolen base comes in, came into play right there and easily scores Gage Doris. I'm sure Gage probably would have scored anyway because he does have, a, have a, some legs on him. Pitch. That curveball is in there for a strike.
Taylor, Taylor can get something on the ground. He has speed to get there to first. 0-1. Swing and a miss on that fastball. It's 0-2. Now you're playing defense here, just trying to fight off anything and get something past the infield. And it's like you said, uh, Christian, just uh, put something on the ground, make Hay Park make a play. And Taylor holds off on that slider. It was well low in a way. Of course, folks, if you're experiencing some internet issues, it's not you, I promise. It's the internet's a little spotty out here. It is cloudy today. One, two. Way high. It was probably heading right towards me. <laughs> you would have caught it. Yeah, and I have a broken hand. Yeah. But it would have been impressive. I've been kind of slumping at second base recently, though, so I'm not I don't have a lot of faith in myself. Pitch, ground ball right side, fielded by the second baseman, underhands at the first in time. Taylor made made his, made his a run for his money on that one, but wasn't able to get there in time. But the Hornets are up one to nothing after the RBI double by Carson Woods. Van Brady goes on the bump for the Huntsville Hornets with the one nothing lead. We'll be right back right after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Hey folks, Clint Mack here with Wiesner Chevrolet in Huntsville. If you've been looking for a great deal, don't look any further than Wiesner Chevy in Huntsville. Come get a crew cab $1,500 truck and take up to $10,000 off the MSRP. We have Chevy tracks as low as $20,995. Do you want to go all electric? We have the all new Bolt EV, Bolt EUV, and the Chevy Blazer. Do you need a heavy duty truck? We've got three quarter tons and one tons in stock ready for you to take home now. Some restrictions may apply, so hurry to Wiesner Chevy in Huntsville and take advantage of these great deals and great inventory. Or visit us online at WiesnerHuntsville.com. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KCN Sports. So glad for you to join us wherever you may be tuning in. Christian on the bump tonight for the Huntsville Hornets once again. Well, not on Tuesday night, Wednesday night uh, to be exact. It's going to be Van Brady, the right-handed pitcher. And uh, You've seen a lot of his. You've seen a lot of his game as much as almost as much as I have. Uh, he doesn't throw hard, but he can get the ball by you. As he's he's got some decent spin on that um, ball. Yeah, I know. Just a tall, tall kid, just able to make that fastball disappear and just boom right to you inside. Does a great job. Has a great slider. Like you said, great movement and is able to get you know get a lot of strikeouts at the same time. Trusting his defense to get those out. Well, speaking of uh, new defense, you have Jackson Slater at third, not Colton Gilbert this time around. I mean, so I've seen some, I've seen Slater a little bit in JV. He can, he can feel the ball pretty cleanly as, as, much, as, as good as the next person. Yeah, well, it's a big test right here when you're at a hot corner in third. Leading off for the Kingwood Park Panthers, it's going to be Blake Heckman, the center fielder, the left-handed hitter, looking to try to help his squad answer back against the Hornets. One run in the top of the first inning. Van Brady for his first pitch of the night. He goes. Fastball in there for a strike, and there's that movement right there. You get a good view of this, uh, of this pitching, folks, since we're looking straight on at Van Brady right at him. You'll see his movement pretty well from this angle. 0-1. Bunt gets it down the left side. Brady fields it. Throw on the first. Going to be close, and it's not in time. Heckman using the speed, and that is what head coach Justin Jennings talked about, is that K-Park really loves to use that uh, small ball to get on four, base. Kevin yeah, you know, just having a lot of speed. Last year, that's what happened exactly the same. Just kept bunting, 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 but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Just got to do a good job in anticipating it, try and get the lead runner out. Sends Kevin Rios to the plate. Could see Heckman go. Rios showing bunt. Slater slowly creeping in, pulls back. Fly ball in the center field. Johnny Waddell has a good beat on it. He makes the catch for out number one. You know, 
know, since Waddell's been in center, he's been he's been doing a great <laughs> job locking up yeah. out there. Well, you know, a, a Huntsville yes. Hornet legend in a sense was in center field. Has the same quality as Johnny Waddell, his speed, Caleb Cotton, and that's the way I believe head coach Justin Jennings, you know, wants, well, excuse me, why he wants Johnny out there is because he has that tremendous speed. He can cover so much ground in so little time. Michael Santiago up at the plate, curveball is inside for a ball. Yeah, you know, just, you know, finding the positions, doing a good job. Stanley in second. Waddell's just been electric in center. He's been getting balls that many people can't get. I mean, that, the Hornet outfield defense has been stellar this year. 1-0, curveball, it's popped up. Parker Jr. is having a look at it, but it will easily go foul to even up the count at one and one. And again, just be ready for that bunt. You know, like uh, the Hornets, uh, Christian, K-Park also got some new turf. Yeah. I believe last year it was infield was turf and the outfield was grass. Actually, the only thing that was turf was the mound. I got corrected by some of the players that played here last year. One, one. Fastball runs inside it, catches the plate for a strike. It runs the count in Brady's favor at one and two. Turf is just, it's nice, but it is nice to have that natural grass and that dirt, but it's easier to maintain, especially in high school. Ground balls, too, are a lot more oh, predictable. They skip up. <laughs> They're way better. I got some experience with that. <laughs> me, me and you both. <laughs> one, two. Runner goes and Heckman foul. Santiago still at the plate. Heckman led off this bottom of the first inning for the Panthers with a bunt single. Nieto sets himself outside. Might be a slider coming here. Brady's one-two pitch. Fastball instead, I'll go foul yet again. I don't know, Car uh, not Carlos, Christian, it's a uh, Brady's uh, movement on that fastball looks pretty good tonight. Yeah, he's doing a good job able to find his spots, especially starting off in that top left corner. Right now, Santiago just late on everything right now. Probably try to pound that fastball on the inside part of the plate. Pick off the first, it's not in time. Yeah, he's trying blowing by him. Of course, that extra day of rest might help Van Brady out a little bit. Gives him an extra day to prepare. One, two. That's just a bit inside to even the count to 22. Take a strikeout or a ground ball here if you're a Van Brady. 2-2. Two, two. Liner up the middle, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Waddell able to get to it, though, quickly. And that's going to be another single for Kingwood Park, this time coming into the hands of Michael Santiago. And K Park has something cooking here. Yeah, you got one down. Right now, you can go third, you can go second, you can go first, you can get a double play. That'll help you. Uh, he, he, he has the construction gloves, Luke. Uh, Aiden Murray does. <laughs> the welder's gloves. Welder's gloves. First pitch from Brady to Murray. Brady looking back at second at Heckman. Pitch. Fastball, rather, that slider just broke. That, and that's where the movement looks pretty good for Brady. Even though that was a ball, Murray offered at it for a little bit. If you can try to tunnel the, that fastball and that slider pretty well, can make it really hard for Kingwood Park to read the ball off your hand. Slider at the bottom of the zone for a strike. Good pitch, looking like it was gonna stay on top. And just cut down, hit that bottom of the zone. Got the call. Good pitch to try to get 
batters to pop up on or get on top of it for a soft ground ball. 1-1 with one out, runners on first and second. Brady taking his time. Time's gonna get called by the batter, Ian Murray, the designated hitter tonight for Kenwood Park. Once again, Kenwood Park second in the district. And right now, really cloudy, but sun shining to right field with the sun going down. Still a 1-1 count. Last ball dives outside the zone to run it to two and one. Catcher Evler is due up if his number is called. 2-1. Both runners go. Nieto trying to frame the pitch right there, but it's just a bit outside. Home plate umpire not falling for that one. It runs the count to 3-1. and one. This is where, this, Christian, this is where sometimes the makings of a big inning happen. And can't this is can't let it happen right here. Just gotta pitch your pitch right here. Three one. Fly ball into right field. Austin Taylor's moving in. Josh Stanley, he makes the catch on the backhand. Wow, what a play by the second baseman. Seems like Taylor lost it in the sunlight for a moment, but Stanley using his speed to close in on it. Yeah, did a great job tracking it down. Like we said, right. Right field just hitting all of the sun. And Stanley doing a good job and bagging Taylor with that. And I have two down. Yeah. Trying to get the last out. And you have any bag to go to. I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put that down as an F four. It, it was not really a pop up to be fair. True. First pitch from Brady to Evler. It's a slider in there for a strike. Good start 0 and one. What'd you put that down originally? A P4? Yeah, F4 makes sense. Fly out. It, it, it wasn't really a pop up. So, 0 oh, 1. Another good slider in there for a strike. Pick off to second. It's not in time. A good idea to try to quickly get out of the inning. And good thing Langley was on the same page as Noah Nieto. It's count 0 2. Brady, by the way, is on the bump. Nieto's behind home plate. Brian Parker Jr. at first. Josh Stanley at second. Jackson Slater at third. Holden Langley at shortstop. Gage Doris in left field. John and Waddell in center field. And Austin Taylor is in right field. Those are your defensive alignments for the Huntsville Hornets. 0 2 pitch is way outside in the other batter's box trying to get Evler chasing. So it runs the count to 1 and 2. You know, Evler just hugging right over the plate. I'm actually kind of a fan of that kind of waste pitch, I guess you could say, because, I mean, the is setting up outside again. Might gonna tr might try to go back to that pitch again. This time maybe a bit closer to the plate, and time is called by Evler. Yeah, I mean, you're up in the count, you're 0-2. Doesn't hurt to throw one out, out there, try and get the batter to chase. Now 1-2, still, still pitcher favored here. Still in the bottom of the first innings, two outs, one, two, runners on first and second. Brady goes. Ground ball right side, it will go foul. I feel like this next pitch can, can decide what the at-bat's gonna be like. It'll probably be a nice slider down, down outside. Let's we'll see what happens here. Looking back at Heckman at second. That's going to go foul over the K Park dugout into the woods, down into the creek. Heckman led off this bottom of the first inning with a bunt singled, and Rios flew out to center field. Then Santiago reached base on a single up the middle, and then Murray. Flew out to second base in shallow right field. And now right, it all comes down to Evler. One, two. 
Ground ball, chopper right side. Brian Parker Jr. fields it. Underhands it to Brady for out number three. Van Brady able to strand Kingwood Park Panther runners on first and second. And it's going to be a 1 0 lead for the Huntsville Hornets heading to the second inning. We'll be right back after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Affordable Plumbing Incorporated in Huntsville is a proud supporter of Hornet softball and baseball. Family owned and operated since 2000, Affordable Plumbing serves the plumbing needs of Huntsville, New Waverly, Trinity, and other surrounding areas. The company is backed by years and years of experience and strives to support the community in a courteous and professional manner for all your plumbing needs. Call them at 936-291-7886. Again, that's Affordable Plumbing at 936-291-7886. Sting them, Hornets! Welcome back to the Hornet Nation broadcast network powered by KSAM Sports. While we have the time, let's thank some of our wonderful sponsors. This broadcast of Huntsville Hornet Baseball is brought to you in part by Wiesner of Huntsville, home of the bottom line, and by Mid-South Fiber Inn, local company, local people, local service. Christian, that's exactly the kind of first inning you needed for the Huntsville Hornets. You only scored one run in the top of the first, but it's like you you and I pointed out, quality at bats, and you were able to strain, strain Kingwood Park runners on the base pass, not allowing them to cross the plate. This is exactly where you want to be right now. Yeah, have the lead going to the second. Brady on going up. Just keep it going. You had three, you had three batters do a full count on headings. Just keep it going. Do quality at bats. Six, seven, eight do her hitters do up for the Huntsville Hornets. First off is the pitcher, Van Brady. One, two. Or that <laughs> that scoreboard threw me off. Well, there is one part that's uh, on on the one part. It's one and O. Oh. Do you call that a strike or you call that a ball? is low well on the scoreboard out in uh, right field they said that that first pitch was a ball so it's 2-0 and oh, as far as I know Hennings looking to try to shake off that first inning it's going to go foul so we can confidently add at least one strike on there and I think uh, if, that, if that scoreboard's right then Doing a good job by Brady. Yeah. <laughs> Two one. Curveball liner down the right field line to go foul. Well, it doesn't matter at this point if that first pitch was a strike or a ball. It's two and two. I'm cloudy now. Yeah, sun's starting to peer away. Wind up from Hennings. Curveball's called strike three. And that's one away. Fortunately a backwards K. Yeah, it didn't look like it didn't look like it crossed the plate. I guess uh Johnny Goodell. It's a good frame by Nate Evler. Yeah. First pitch to Johnny Waddell is low and inside for ball one. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, Christian. The way the clouds are with the sunlight actually looks kind of pretty. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it brings brings the light out in your eyes. <laughs> one zero is low and outside for ball two. Of course, this game two zero. It's in there for a strike. It's two and one. It was supposed to be played last night, but due to the threat of rain, that did not come, as I heard reportedly. It got moved to tonight for a rare Wednesday night edition of Texas High School Baseball. 2-1. That pitch is low. Johnny Waddell having himself a good at-bat as well. Three and one. That's real eventful here. You got... You got soccer happening right next to baseball. You got baseball going on right now, and you got the 
Pitch is low and outside for ball four, and you got some speed on the base pass right now for the Huntsville Hornets as Johnny Waddell moves on over to first on the walk. Hornets being real patient today. It's helping them out. Well, I, I had this conversation with uh, head coach Session Jennings as well just during our coaches' convo presented by Bill Ford. It's just like, just got to not swing at breaking balls that are non-competitive. First pitch to Brian Parker Jr. is low. He tells Johnny Waddell to hold off, so it's 1-0. Oh. Yeah, there's times where, like, where they're, they're young, so they get eager and wanting to, you know, get a ball, hit a ball out. Head coach Chris Buchner is going out to have a conversation with his pitcher, Andrew Hennings. Folks, while we have paused in the action, be sure, I just want to let you know that you can download the KSAM mobile app on all iOS and Android devices. You can be in the car at home or even right here at the game, live here at Kingwood Park High School or at the Huntsville, base, Huntsville ISD Baseball, excuse me, in the softball complex. It does not matter. Take your hometown radio station and the Huntsville Hornets football team whenever the 2024 season comes through here. On the go, wherever you go. You know, Brian Parker Jr., Christian, is he's been uh, – he's – I mean, if we're being brutally honest, he has struggled, and he knows that he has. He knows that he's not where he wants to be, but if – we can get what he got, what we what we had last year, where he gets on base consistently, and being clutch at the right times, be a really big plus for this Huntsville Hornets lineup. That even after sweeping the Porter Spartans, head coach Justin Jennings says we're still not playing our best baseball yet. Yeah, you know, just being patient. Fly ball into right center field, but it's caught by the right fielder trying to double up Johnny Waddell onto first, but it's not in time. Waddell was on the move. It was a good swing by Parker Jr., but that's out number two. The third baseman, number 49, Jackson Slater. You know, I, I take that. I take that. Yeah, those things will annoy you, but, I mean, you get a quality – you get, you hit it quality well, but it just goes straight to right. And it'll annoy you, but if you just keep it going, if you get a little down, put it through the field – hit hard, just straight to the fielder. Jackson Slater now steps in, the right-handed hitter. First pitch, kind of a cutter. It's 0-1-1. Of course, it's one of the, it's a fastball. It's just like that, just at the last moment, just dives on the glove side. Throws it again, maybe a bit more of a four-seamer. It's 0-2. Hornets looking for some two outs for some two out power. I wouldn't be surprised if Johnny Waddell goes on this pitch. He's thinking about it. Pitch. That's in the turf. It gets away from the catcher and Evler. Waddell retreats back. It's one and two. And so far, Evler doing a great job and not getting any balls past him, keeping it in front. There is some activity down the left field line in that Keenwood Park bullpen. One, two. Called strike three on the outer half of the plate, and that'll do it for the Huntsville Hornets. They were able to get a runner on thanks to Johnny Waddell on the walk, but nothing after that. It's still a one-nothing game, and we'll be right back right after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. I'm Kobe Lovell, 2020 world champion header, seven-time NFR qualifier. I'm Ricky Canton, 15-time NFR qualifier and currently holds the world's record in the cap movement. I'm Cody Johnson. I'm a platinum recording country music artist, cowboy team roper. And I'm no bull bill, and I sell trucks. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, at least I sell them to the cool people. Back here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Van Brady's back out there for his second inning of work. He had a bit of trouble in that first inning when he got two runners, when he allowed two runners to get on base, but then was able to 
calm himself down and get that third out. You just can't consistently let that happen over and over again. You can't allow yourself as a pitcher to keep on pitching in some troubling situations because eventually, uh, Christian, the team's going to score some runs. Yeah, you know. But Van doing a good job and defense behind him, getting him out of that inning. And we've faced this K-Park team before. We've done it last year. They love to bunt. And I know Coach Jennings, that's what they were working on this week, especially having to face them today and then turn around and play them Wednesday, having one day of break. Well, you can see Jackson Slater playing in on the turf grass as Nolan Kruger will lead things off for Kimball Park. He shows bunt. He gets it down, but it will easily roll foul. So far, just an update. Lady Hornets are up on the K Park Panthers. Lady Panthers 1 0 in top of the fifth. Name, they're going by quickly. Curveball, beautiful in there for a strike. A little bit of a drizzle, so two, it's high and away. Of course, weren't really expecting any rain today, so it's probably just that little patch of cloud. Hopefully, it clears away soon. Only hope. One, two. Curveball is taken to the right side through the infield for a base hit. Another leadoff hit to begin an in, in inning for Kingwood Park. Well, left fielder, number 24, Jackson Lindsay. Guys, Kruger getting a hard hit ball to straight through to right. Try and get a double play or get the lead runner out. It's just that one little dark cloud that's over us right now. I'm sure it'll clear away in a moment. Lindsay now steps in for Kingwood Park. First pitch to him is a bunt. He puts it down, but it rolls behind him for a foul ball. Shows Bunt again, gets it down in fair territory. It's rolling, rolling, rolling. He gets picked up, throwing the first in time for out number one. But the sack bunt is successful for Kingwood Park as it moves the runner in Kruger on the first, or the second, rather. Yeah, K-Park is doing a good job and getting a butt down. The right fielder, number one, Cody Jenkins. So Cody Jenkins now steps in with one out, a runner in scoring position, representing the tying run in Nolan Kruger. As that one little patch of cloud goes away. First pitch from Brady. Curveball, it's in there for a strike. And it looks like Nieto got crossed up. Okay, I'll just make sure they can fire that. Yeah, probably just miscommunication there, but yeah, I, I saw Good when. Good job by keeping it in front of you. Yeah, I saw Nieto kind of sticking. He's like shaking his head, like, no. <laughs> oh, one. Fastball. A little below the zone. Looked like, looked like Brady kind of ramped up on that one a little bit. Yeah, just. Kind of just trying, you know, hit the bottom of the zone, get it right by the batter. Two stick count, 1-1. One, one. Brady looking back at second at Kruger. Bunt, and it hits him. The curveball that got away from Van Brady, so it'll be runners on first and second yet again with one away. Uh, shortstop, number 14, Nick Soloniker. Well,
Well, best case scenario right now, if you're the Hornets, you uh, you have a right-handed hitter up in Sloniker. Maybe hope for a ground ball to, to Jackson Slater at third, step on the bag, force out at second. Just, you know, I, I think that's kind of a thing that could happen. You could hope to keep it where it is, one nothing. Shows Bun again pulls back in there for a strike. There's some people who don't like bunning, but it's all old school. <laughs> hey, so it, it, sometimes it, old school works, you know. It works. But yeah, just Slater just had to be ready for anything going its way. Parker Jr. is moving in on closer to the batter's box. Slater staying where he is. Bunt gets it down. It rolls. It will roll foul. The bunt will be off as the count rolls on on to 0-2. Yeah. Well, runners on first and second, but the only advantage with this is you can go third, you can go second, you can go first. Try and just get in this position, try and get the lead runner if possible. If not, turn two. Infielders playing normal depth. Sloniker waiting on Brady on this 0-2 pitch. Ground ball left side, fielded cleanly by Slater on the second for one. On the first, it's not in time, but it is out number two, runners at the corners, however, for Keenwood Park. And I'll turn the lineup card over to the leadoff hitter in Blake Heckman, who reached on a bunt single his last time up. I'm sure with two outs though, uh, Christian, I don't think the bunt will be on because it's too risky at this point. Unless you're very confident you can put a good one down. Especially as a left-handed hitter, you got a bit of an advantage. Yeah, if you can get a good one down, but it is risky. Another tough spot for Brady. He puts the bunt down, tries to. He pulls back. That ball is low. Didn't think he pulled it back in time, but not according to the home plate umpire. You know, on the previous play, I did like Slater. You know, he moved, he used his momentum to go to second, try and get that double play. It's unfortunate. Jenkins. Would you would Sloniker believe? Do you think he probably play. should have stepped on the third base bag anyway? One zero pitch is outside. Nieto almost let that go by him. It's two and zero. I think that would have been a good player, even possibly tag the runner and go first. That's a good one too. But just in the momentum, you, you, you try and just think, let's get two. And at that moment, you don't really have to tag the runner. If the runner backs off anyway or tries to obstruct you in any way, it's two outs right there, potentially. 2-0. Shows Bunt again, gets it down, it rolls. Brady fields it, goes on to home, and he is safe. Oh, my. I thought he was out right there for a moment. It was a smart decision by Brady to go to the closest bag, which is home. But unfortunately, it doesn't work out. It's all tied up. Wow. What'd you think? I thought it was good. I thought it was out. But it's, it's it's the umpire's call, and he's the closest one to that. It's a it's a one it's it's back to a nothing nothing game. You gotta have that mentality right now. But Brady still has to get out of this inning. First pitch is in there for a strike. Brady working back to the stretch. Infielders playing back as the wind gusts. Curveball, beautiful in there for a strike. It runs to 0-2. Wind gusts are up to 26 miles an hour. Here's when Brady just blows a fastball by him to get out of it. Curveball, it's fouled. And the runners are moving in there. Yeah. 
This is Kevin Rios up for Kingwood Park. Flew out to center field his last time up. Oh, two, two outs. Pitch. Just a bit low and outside, it's one and two. I figured, I figured he would have gotten that call. As the wind just continues to blow. Brady goes, runners go. Ground ball left side, diving stop by Slater, throw on the first, in time! What a play by Jackson Slater to get out of the inning. It's all tied up 1-1, but I'm sure that will help the Hornets a lot later on down the line. We'll be right back on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network right after this. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Weezer Hyundai to get a real deal? And Weezer has been putting those deals together for Texans for 50 years, including the Hyundai Shoppers Assurance Plan and America's Best Warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Elantras, Sonatas, Santa Fe's, Tucson, Palisades, and more. All in new sparkling facilities. So make the drive to Conroe today and buy for less. Eight minutes from the Woodlands, exit 87B Wilson Road in Conroe or WeezerHyundai.com. Your next vehicle is here. Folks, tonight's broadcast of Huntsville Hornets baseball is copyrighted for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any other transmission or accounts of the game without the express written consent of 101.7 K Sam and Huntsville High School Athletics is strictly prohibited. Headings back on the bump. Christian, you said it, you said it best yourself. It's back to a nothing nothing game. Yep. It's all tied up here, so anything goes, but starting off to the top of the lineup with Stanley getting the quality AB. And I think that's a great point right there, Christian. You have the, your top of the lineup up who saw, who seen that, seen the Hennings really good, working some good at bats. Just a matter of now, what can you do your second and third time through the order? Because as a top, as your top, as a top three, you're guaranteed in high school baseball to get three shots at it. Yeah, you know, last at bat, Stanley, everything was inside on him. Probably anticipating that. First pitch from Hennings to Stanley hits the turf. This wind's picking up time after time. Yeah. I, I, am, I am waiting in anticipation when the gauge door steps up to the plate. That one gets by. Evler, the catcher, runs the count to 2-0. and oh. See what Stanley could do here. 2-0 pitch is high. It's above the zone for ball three. Gage Norris waiting in the on-deck circle. Stanley, of course, grounded out softly to the pitcher his last time up, 3-0 in the zone right down Main Street for a strike. Three one is fly ball down the right field line. Right fielder is having a look at it and he makes the catch in foul territory for out number one. Good play out in right field by Jenkins. Especially when that win is coming from left from left field and it's pushing that ball away and away and away. It's uh, no telling what's gonna happen. Yeah, great speed there in order to get that out for the Panthers. It's unfortunate for Stanley just hitting it late and riding it and staying fair. I thought it was gonna get foul. First pitch to Doris. Curveball, it's low and outside is a good idea to try to place it somewhere around that area, but it's a 1 0 count for Gage Doris. Pitch is in there for a called strike. Yeah, Henning's going back to that outside. That's where the umpire's favoring the strike, the strike zone. 1 1. Fly ball. 
Right field line, back at it is Jenkins. Looking up, it is foul. Oh man, some controversy now and head coach Justin Jennings is gonna have a conversation with the home plate umpire. And the home plate umpire is gonna go down to first base to talk to the first base umpire. Oh, uh, this is a big call here. I don't I don't know what the first base umpire's initial call was. Uh, this is a long conversation. What are they going to say? Foul ball. So the count runs up to one and two. Gage looked like he put a good swing on that one, though. What did you see there? I, I, I thought I can't. It's hard to tell from our point of view, honestly. So I'm not going to say anything. I mean, of course, if you're the Hornets, you prefer that to be a home run. One, two, outside. And this wind just knocked down my score sheet. It's brutal out here. And unfortunately, wasn't able to see it myself. See what Doors can do here. See if he can shake it off. Two, two. It's low, a good take. He thought about going, but holds off. It's a full count pitch coming up. <laughs> Times called by Gage Doris. The umpire wasn't really emphatic on giving him anything, of course. Uh, Home play umpire at his own discretion can give a better time. 3-2 pitch. Low for ball four. Runner now on first for the Huntsville Hornets for Noah Nieto. <laughs> and I got I to gotta give Gage a lot of credit, especially. You know, it's, not, it's hard to, you know, for a ball that you may have thought was a home run but was called off. And, of course, the Hornet side of things not liking to call. It's still a good at bat. Put on right there by Gage Doris to work a full count walk, yeah, especially, a, especially when you're down one two. Yeah, doing a good job and having short term memory. Just, just think about it. Go back to the count. Does a good job and gets a walk. Curveball's high, picked to first. It's on time. Doris with a considerable lead off of first. Pitch to Nieto, fastball is at the knees for a strike. Yeah, last at bat for Nieto, he flew out. So try and get a quality at bat here, see some more pitches. Next pitch, it's in the turf. Nieto tell, telling Doris to hold off over there. Live, live score update. After this pitch, 2 1. It's outside to make the count 3 and 1. The Huntsville Lady Hornets just about, just a bit of a walk from us to the right of us. They are leading still 1 0 against the Kingwood Park Lady Panthers. Bottom of the sixth inning. It's about to get underway. Over there, 3 1. Outside, four ball four, back-to-back -back walks for the Huntsville Hornets. Now set up Carson Woods, who is the one responsible for that first run the Hornets scored, and RBI doubled down the left field line, and there's going to be an infield conference. Yeah, back-to-back -back walks. It's quality at bats. Like we said, just staying patient, not chasing anything in the dirt. 
And now you have runners in scoring position. Now batting number eight, Carson Wood. I think, th I think first time, the, the, the first and second time that the first three batters at the top of the batting order for the Huntsville Hornets, they've all worked the count to three balls at least. See what Woods can do here. First pitch, a fastball down the middle for a strike. Henning steps off, steps back on. A one. Curveball, it hung, and Woods was not ready for it. It's a count, count 0 and 2. Sometimes that curveball down the middle is sometimes the best pitch because a hitter's not expecting it sometimes to be down the middle hanging. But I wouldn't do it again. It's going to be fouled. Probably a good thing Woods fouled that off because if uh, that's caught cleanly by the catcher in Evler, it's probably that pitch was probably the one to ring him up. Yeah, just trying to get the outside, get the batter to swing. So just trying to anticipate anything inside. 0-2. Oh, swing and a miss on that slider. Two away for the Hornets. And now Austin Taylor looking to try to at least bring that runner at second in Gage Doris home. Do have a courtesy runner, by the way, that came in for Noah Nieto. That's Peyton Moore out there. Taylor grounded out to second base his last time up. First pitch to Taylor, it's inside. Well, well this wind just keeps on brewing on. You can hear it on our crowd mic. One oh. Live ball that will easily go foul to even the count. Still got someone warming up in that Kingwood Park bullpen down in left field foul territory. Probably one of the only few high schools that has a bullpen on their field. Pitch. Tie for ball two. Van Brady waits in the on deck circle. Sure, he would like to have another shot at Hennings. Looking back at second. Swing and a miss. Taylor just trying to swing at anything close to him, trying to get anything on the ground. Try to put the barrel on the ball. Same time, stay defensive. 2-2, Two -two, curveball, strike three, called on the upper outside corner of the plate, and I'll do it for the Huntsville Hornets. They were able to get two runners on base on back-to-back -back walks, but nothing else after that. We head to the bottom of the third inning here in Kingwood Park right after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KCM Sports. At Mid-South Fiber Internet, we understand the importance of quality service. We don't just work here, we live here too. Helping our communities any way we can. Connecting communities one line at a time. Working around the clock for you. We are committed to serving. Committed to our communities. We are committed to you. Mid-South Fiber Internet, local, reliable service you can count on. Sign up today at MidSouthFiber.com. Back here on the Hornet Nation broadcast. Now we're Van Brady back on the bump for his third inning of work. Well, we still have a pause in the action. Let's think. 
some of our wonderful sponsors. This broadcast of Huntsville Hornet Baseball is brought to you in part by Bill Fick Ford, No Bull, Just Good Deals. And by Affordable Plumbing, family owned and operated since 2000, supporting Walker and surrounding counties. So, still a 1-1 game, Christian. You had two runners on, weren't able to capitalize, but Kingwood Park has also been struggling on trying to bring runners home when they're on base. It's a great job by the Huntsville defense in getting out on that. You know, unfortunate play at the plate, not going your way and thinking it wasn't out, but Switch over, Maybe move on, keep the going. The as we have already Number hit the hour mark Michael here in Kingwood. Well, Michael Santiago now steps in as the lights finally come on, at least above us. First pitch from Brady. It's high on the curveball for ball one as we're underway to start this bottom half of the third. Santiago reach on a single his last time up. 1-0. Fastball, it's fouled. Now both of these pitchers have been, their pitch count has been high so far, barely in the third inning. They don't have a pitch count counter up on that scoreboard in the right field. Tillman Brady's trying to get on the same page here. I tell you though that Nieto is only a sophomore, but he acts like a senior out there. Yeah, great job, maturity. Not start catching for the Hornets here, keeping everything in front of them, blocking the plate, the brick wall. One one. Curveball is high. See what Brady can throw here to try to even the count or get Santiago out. Ground ball up the middle, right past Brady and through for a base hit. Two for two night for Michael Santiago and another leadoff base runner for Kingwood Park. He's got a solid hit, went straight up the middle right between legs of Brady and nothing you can do there, Just quality at bat. As we know, all these these Panthers, they can run, so they can bunt. I don't, I don't know what the guy with the welder gloves is going to bunt. <laughs> Ground ball left side. Langley's there. Throws on the second for one. On the first, it's not in time, but the Hornets were able to get the lead runner in Santiago, so it's one away. Yeah, good job, able to get the lead runner out. It looked like it looked like Langley kind of hesitated a moment. Probably didn't realize that he had so much time already. It was a slow ground ball, so he's probably thinking go on the first. But get the lead runner out, runner on first. One out for Nate Evler, the catcher, the left-handed hitter. Chopper right side. Brian Parker Jr. fields it cleanly, but decides to step on the bag for the three unassisted runner. Moves on over to second. Two away. Okay, he'd like to try and get the lead runner, but first baseman, number Brian nine, Parker doing a good Joel job, not trying to Krieger. force it and just taking the easy easy out right there to his left. I mean, at that point, you you just try you just try to get the easy out and try to put pressure on Kimwood Park to try to do something. Yep, now you got two down. Just need to get one more to get out of this inning. Kruger singled his last time up in the second inning. Was the runner that came around and scored to tie things up after that RBI single by Heckman in the second inning. 
First pitch from Brady. Kruger shows bunt, gets it down. It's going to go foul. I'd say the Panthers, they've probably gotten about two quality bunts and everything else has just gone foul. Man, that's not really – not really their game, but – yeah, I mean, in that sense, it's like that's not you don't expect that because they're so good at doing that. Let's see what Kruger does here. He might pull back. He does. Pitch is low and outside. Outfielders playing normal depth. So is the infield. One one from Brady. Curveball, beautiful, called strike. My goodness. <laughs> they had a lot of hook on that one. Kind of, it was almost, it almost looked like a twelve six. Yeah. You don't really see Came that. Came up and just went down. You don't really see that much these days. A uh, 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 actual twelve six. One two. Fastball swing and a miss. Van Brady gets his first strikeout of the night as he puts down Kingwood Park once again. He is through two straight, or one, one scoreless inning rather. He has thrown a scoreless inning in two of the three innings, still to all tied up. 1-1 one, one as we head to the top of the fourth inning here at Kingwood Park High School just outside of Porter, Texas. We'll take a break here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Affordable Plumbing Incorporated in Huntsville is a proud supporter of Hornet softball and baseball. Family owned and operated since 2000, Affordable Plumbing serves the plumbing needs of Huntsville, New Waverly, Trinity, and other surrounding areas. The company is backed by years and years of experience and strives to support the community in a courteous and professional manner for all your plumbing needs. Call them at 936-291-7886. Again, that's Affordable Plumbing at 936-291-7886. Sting them, Hornets! Back here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Good inning by Van Brady, and now he'll step up to lead off this top of the fourth inning. Henning's still out there. First pitch. In there for strike. Brady, of course, struck out Lurking his last time up on a questionable call. Conversation between Evler and his pitcher, Hennings. Oh one. Curveball is low and inside. Popped up, it's gonna go foul. Brady just late on that swing there. Down this count. Foul off anything close right here. That's what you're always told. Especially in a tight game like this, 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One, That's popped up. It's right behind second base. It should be an easy play. It is for out number one. Making the catch out at second base is Michael Santiago. One away. They'll send Johnny Waddell, who had a good at bat. His last time up, he walked. The center fielder. Number five, Johnny Waddell. 
to as a second pop fly for the Hornets. So they're doing a good job in getting quality hits and quality ABs. Called strike on that pitch. For for Johnny, I th his game his game is speed. And if as long as he gets something on the ground, he can make a routine play, not a routine play. He just tries to get something on the ground and beat, beat the out. Chopper up the middle is going to be a tough play for Slonaker. The shortstop throwing the first, and it is in time for out number two. Score update, bottom of the seventh inning at softball. Huntsville Lady Hornets playing Keenwood Park here at Keenwood Park. It's 1-0, and Keenwood Park's down to their final out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Parker Jr. flew out his last time up in right field. First pitch, it's high. One zero holds off on that one, but it's in there for a strike. Yeah, Parker Jr. just the second lefty in this lineup. Pitch is outside. Hennings nods at his catcher, 2-1. Liner up the middle, and it's caught at short by Sloniker. And that's a 1-2-3 inning for Andrew Hennings. Still a 1-1 ball game. We're halfway home through this one, folks. Head to the bottom of the fourth inning here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Country music is different than other music genres. Our artists sing about family, friendship, the ups and downs of this old world, and living this life. Country music tells the story of us. 101.7 KSAM is your hometown radio station. Play in today's best country and all your favorites. And you can have this hometown connection right there on your smartphone with the all-new KSAM mobile app. It's in your iPhone and Android app store right now. And we also have direct links on our website, ksam1017.com. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Still a 1-1 game between the Huntsville Hornets and the Kingwood Park Panthers. Folks, just want to let you know that you can keep up to date with all things regarding your hometown radio station on social media. Follow us on Facebook and X slash Twitter. They'll call it Twitter nowadays. At KSAM1017. Again, it's at KSAM1017 on Facebook and X slash Twitter. Follow us anywhere for all the latest in Huntsville and Walker County. Bottom of the inning about to get underway here. Jackson Lindsay now steps in. Put down a successful sack bunt his last time up in the second inning. Of course, the bunt's off in this one, you would think. Mass ball's low and outside. Wind still gusting out here. 1-0. Fastball, it's a fly ball down the right field line, but it will easily go foul outside the field. We, glad need, we need paperweights next time. Yeah, I'm glad I brought a uh, windbreaker jacket. <laughs> I mean, I did well. I accidentally brought it. It was in the back of my truck, and I didn't even know it until I got to the radio station. 
Curveball, it hits the batter in Lindsay. So it's a leadoff base runner once again. The right fielder, number one. So Cody, Cody Jenkins now Jenkins. steps in. He was also hit by a pitch. Yeah, that Back. curve just getting away from yeah. Brady. Trying to get it inside, just getting away. Well, Jackson Slater now playing inside about five steps in on the grass. He takes a couple more steps. Bunt shows down. It's put down. It rolls. Foul. And that's, again, another unsuccessful bunt by Kingwood Park. You just don't see that especially for a team that prides themselves in that kind of small ball identity. Yeah, they usually keep it fair, put it, try and push it away from the third baseman, but everything's just gone foul for them. Maybe it's the turf, I don't know. Well, Jenkins is showing bunt again. Pitch. Gets it down this time, it rolls straight to Brady. He'll underhand it to first easily for the first out. And that's another successful sack bunt for the bottom of the order. This time, Cody Jenkins putting it down. Uh, shortstop, number 14, Nick Slotiker. Slotiker steps in, he grounded out, or rather he reached on a fielder's choice his last time up. That's Lindsey out on second. He reached base on a hit by pitch to begin this bottom of the fourth. First pitch is a little high and in. I think just I think if you're Van, just one thing you just gotta try to focus on is getting that first pitch strike. Because a 1 0 count is way different than an 0 1 count. Yeah, so switch up. So he's trying to get that inside on every uh, first pitch. Brady looking back at second. He goes. Fastball is low. Well, nearly runs in on the batter in Sloniker. Runs the count to three and oh. Leadoff hitter Blake Hetman is waiting on deck. I don't think that flag out in left center field has stopped moving ever since we got here. 3 0. Pitch is outside the zone for ball four. Runners on first and second now with one out in. Assistant coach Cole Bohan is going to go out and have a conversation with Van Brady. While we do have the, this quick pause in the action, let's think some more of our wonderful sponsors. This broadcast of Pumps Warner Baseball is, part, is brought to you in part by Wiesner, Hyundai, and Conroe, where you buy for less. What do you think? Well, if you were in Cole Bohannon's shoes, what would you be telling Van right now? You know, just try, try and calm him down, figure out the pitches, ask him what's working. Then again, you're looking at your stat sheet and you know what's going on with the next batter. And just try and work around that. Oh, this is, it's cold and my nose is running. This is not great. <laughs> Interesting music going on right now. The center fielder number eight, Blake Heckman. If I'm the Hornets, I'm expecting a bunt right here. Yeah, Brian Parker Jr. is in field right now in the, in the grass of the turf. Yeah, in that situation, Stanley's going to have to be the one covering the first base bag or Van Brady, whoever gets there first. Heckman shows bunt. That pitch is outside. Pick down to second, not in time. There's one out. 
but you can get any bag here. Forced out first, second, and third. 1-0. Bunt gets down, it's rolling, rolling, and it will easily roll foul. And again, another foul bunt. I mean, compared, compared to last year when we came here, there was a lot of bunts, and that's what would really hurt the Hornets and how the Panthers would get so many other runs. But so far today, everything's just trailed foul. Well, around this time last year, the Kingwood Park Panthers came back from a, a big lead in the, bottom, in the top of the seventh inning back in Huntsville, Texas. So they're just trying to do something like that once again. Heckman shows bunt again. He might pull back. We'll see. He pulls back, 1-1, one, one. runners go, throw down to third. It is not in time. Ball stays in on the infield. It's a 2-1 count. Slayer, Slayer trying to get that runner at third, but getting undercut, doing a good job and keeping that ball in front of him and not getting by to get that runner in. Yeah. Infielders playing in on the grass. This is a big part of the game right here with runners on second and third with just the one out. Seems like any, any ball that's put in play is going straight to Nieto at home plate. 2-1. That's just a bit outside, 3-1. That umpire is not calling that outside Earlier pitch anymore. Was. Huh? Earlier he was. Yeah. <laughs> Got to throw your pitch right here in this situation. Otherwise, you load the bases. 3-1. Fly ball out in the right field. Taylor's going back, still going back at the wall, and it is off the top of the wall. One run will score, throws in on the infield, and that's just going to be... All that, Kingwood Park's going to score, but they do score one to get out to a 2-1 lead. Uh, third baseman, number four, Kevin Nurios. Heckman able to pull that ball into right, get it off the wall, and bring in that runner. Good shot by Heckman. Infielder still playing in on inside the dirt of the turf against Kevin Rios. Still not out of the reach yet. Still just a 2-1 game. But one out. Runners on second and third. Kingwood Park's looking for some more. Yeah, if you're the Hornets just try and stop the bleeding and try and get these at least one out here and keep the runners on the base. Chopper will go foul. We'll say for a heck of a shot, Taylor played it well in keeping that runner at third. Yeah. And it was about it was about a few more feet from being a home run. A one curveball is outside. Yeah, folks, just to give you some dimensions, left field is 315, out to center is 375, and the same from left to right is 315. But with this wind going left to right, the ball will die easier. One, one. In the zone for a strike, one to two, a good pitch. Good crowd. 
for both sides, for Kingwood Park and for Huntsville. One, two. It's in the turf, it gets away from Nieto for a moment, but both runners will retreat back to their respective bases. I definitely just did not lose my pen due to the win. <laughs> I don't even think paperweights will even be enough. Seeing how this wind is blowing. 2-2. Two -two. Outside. Runs the count full. Don't want to load the bases here. Not the end of the world, but surely not what you want. A little foul will do it again at three and two. This game has honestly felt like it's been going forever. We're only at the bottom of the fourth inning. So far, we're about clo we're close to an hour thirty mark. Yeah, it's eight. Game. Yeah, we started at around we started at seven one p.m. And there is going to be some activity brewing in that Hornet bullpen down the right field line. Can't tell who's uh, who's uh, excuse me who's going out there. But la what, last Friday was about a three-hour game. About that. Oh man, it, like it was almost a three-hour game. It was close. I'll tell you what, though, this this weather that's going on for the past few days, it has really. Appreciate it. It was really <laughs> messed up my sciences, that's for sure, my respiratory <laughs> system. 3-2. <laughs> he hold up? And they're going to check over to the field umpire. And he did swing. It's a strikeout. And then head coach Chris Buchner is going to have a conversation with the home plate umpire about that call, but he can't overturn that. It's a, it's a judgment call. He can't overturn that. Some, <laughs> there's just some drama in this game. It's baseball. Yeah. In Texas. Let me. <laughs> And it, it was funny because Nieto, because Nieto was asking to point to the field umpire, and then the home plate umpire was like shaking, like what? And he's, and then I guess Nieto was like, check down there. And wait, are they gonna keep the runner at first? Okay, good. Coming off. So now you got two down. Yeah, it's two out. Make sure and everything is and no walk the batter. Yeah, they're gonna intentionally walk Michael Santiago, who's two for two tonight. Don't really see that often, but does put the cleanup hitter in Aiden Murray up. He has flown out to second base in shallow right field and has reached on the fielder's choice his last time up in the third inning. A big spot here, it's 2-1. Kimwell Park in the lead, but they're threatening right here, right now. First pitch is outside the zone. No, it's in there for a strike. Good like, start. Yeah, like you said earlier, when Brady's able to get that first strike, he does well. Did not go. It's going to even the count to one and one. So go over down right field says 2-0, but it's just a 1-1 a one, one count. Bases loaded, two out, 1-1. One, one. It's in the zone for a strike on the outer half of the play. Murray thought about going, but it would have been a strike anyway. 
One and two, big spot, big pitch for Van Brady coming up. One, two, curveball, and that hit him? Umpire hasn't called anything. Man, there's a, this inning has been traumatic, I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a, officially a ball, it's, one, it's two and two now. Hour and a half mark just struck here, 8.31 p.m. Central Time. Two, two, two out, bases loaded. Swing and a miss! Van Brady stops the bleeding and leaves the bases loaded. We now head to the fifth inning, just a one-run game. I'm Kobe Lovell, 2020 world champion header, seven-time NFR qualifier. I'm Ricky Canton, 15-time NFR qualifier and currently hold the world record in the cap open. I'm Cody Johnson. I'm a platinum recording country music artist, cowboy team roper. And I'm no gold bill, and I sell trucks. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, at least I sell them to the cool people. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. 9-1 and two hitters do up in Jackson Slater, Josh Stanley, and Gage Doris. I think this is a, I think this is exactly where you want the part of the lineup to be for the Huntsville Hornets and to try to get that one run back and possibly more. Especially now that Hennings is going to be throwing to the top part of the order third time through. Dana you know, trying to get Slater on, get some speed, and then you go back to Stanley, who's been doing a good job and running the count. But leading off for Huntsville, the third baseman. Like the breeze has died down a little bit. Yeah, but the flag it's, is it's still it's dancing out there. Yeah, but it's still cold. You can actually see the shadow if you look at the 375 on the left center of your screen. I keep, and I tell you, if you keep looking at it, it's still gonna keep waving. First pitch to Jackson Slater, it's high for ball one, it's right at the head, and the Huntsville Hornet dugout is really feeling it right now. They gotta, they gotta have some momentum, even though Keenway Park got the lead right, got the lead for the first time tonight, 2-1 game right now. Leaving the bases loaded like that's gotta hurt. Next pitch, swing and a miss. Yeah, you always say to leave the, the runners on base, especially in a bases loaded situation, but just doing a good job of Van Brady able to get a strike out there to get out of that inning and prevent any more damage from occurring. 1-1. One, one. Curveball in there for a strike. Slater didn't like, to, didn't like that pitch. That kind of pitch, though, that's high and in, and if you're not ready for it, you either swing and miss at it or it's a slow grounder or it's popped up. Yeah, Henning's been doing a good job of getting a curveball his way. It's fouled. You know, starting off this fifth inning, Slater just trying to do a good job and just get on base. Not trying to do any more of it. Yeah. But Watch out for that curveball. Last time out, he struck out looking on the curveball outside. You know, at this level, Christian, you know, at the other levels, now it doesn't matter that much, but what separates good from great teams is defense. I think Slater should try to just put the ball in play and just make Kimo Park make something happen on the defensive end. One, two is lined up the middle. It's down on the infield shortstop. Soniker feels it, throw on the first. It is in time. Got him by a step. And that's out number one. The second baseman number six, Josh Stanley. I mean, Slater did a good job putting on the ground, but Son Sloniker just 
backhanded it, did a great job, put it in play on the move. That's a smart Got play. Smart play to just backhand it and then because you backhand it, quick transition from glove to hand. Really good play by the shortstop, I gotta say. Josh Stanley now steps in. He flew out to, to right field his last time up. Pitch. It's in the turf. But now you got one down, but you're back to the top of your order with Stanley. one -oh. Fly ball, right center field, center fielder going back, still going back, and it's down on the ground for a hit. It almost rolls all the way to the wall. Stanley's taking three. The throw's coming in, it looks high. It is, it's saved by the pitcher, but Josh Stanley in there with a the one out triple. And that just keeps the momentum going for the Hornets doing a good job. Stanley taking that Second pitch, took it right to right center. And good base running to go to three. And Doris, last time he, he, he had the home run distance, <laughs> and unfortunately went foul. Yeah, and this is the third time he's facing Hennings. They do have activity warming up down in that K-Park bullpen still. And they're gonna bring the infielders in. Tying run at third, represented by Josh Stanley. Gage Doris is now up. He walked his last time up. He's reached base in his last two plate appearances, but this is a spot where he can tie this game right back up. First pitch, low in the turf, and Stanley's gonna stay right where he is at third, it's one and oh. One oh. That's low again for 2-0. and oh. Hitters count for Gage Doris. Hitters favor. It's usually a, you try to look for that 2-0 fastball. Looking outside here. Oh. That's high and in for ball three. No Nieto is waiting on deck. Called strike on the outer half of the plate. This uh, at bat is uh, pretty tense. You got the, uh, you got Huntsville, Huntsville Lady Horns softball that just finished their game. They're staying behind and watching this one. 3-1. Liner at the middle. It's through the infield for a base hit, and this game is tied. Great at bat, able to take his time. And Doris, fortunately, hot, hot soup had to watch his lips and Hennings, but yeah. you take that, you get a run in. Thankfully, no one was hurt. And Andrew Hennings' is night is going to end after that. New pitcher coming in for Kingwood Park right after this. We'll have more information on the new arm for the Panthers.
Huntsful wakes up to the all-new KSAM Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy. Get a positive start on your workday with local news, weather and sports, and some inspiration and laughs to warm you like a hot cup of coffee. And now you can join the daily conversation with Brian and Tracy by calling or texting the KSAM listener line at 936-295-4102. Come on, neighbor. The all-new KSAM Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy on 101. Point seven K Sam. Find us on social media on both Facebook and X at K Sam One Hundred One Seven. Also, be sure to subscribe to the One Hundred One Point Seven K Sam YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything going on with your hometown radio station. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation broadcast network, powered by K Sam Sports. Now on the mound for the Kingwood Park Panthers. Number two, Tyler Brown. Bit of a taller right-handed pitcher. He's gonna be facing a deep part of the lineup of Huntsville with Noah Nieto and Carson Woods at minimum. With one out, runner on first is Gage Doris who drove in Josh Stanley after Stanley hit a one out triple. And of course, Gage Doris tying the game and that's where that I that's where I think that leaving the bases loaded works in Huntsville's favor. It just it just changes the momentum. Even though they gave up that lead, just that momentum goes on your side. And when you have a had that top of the order coming up in that next half of the inning, it just can completely shift the game. Yeah, you're seeing it here. Brady just doing a good job in getting out of the inning. And then starting off with Slater, unfortunately grounding out, but Stanley getting a triple, putting a runner in scoring position. Engage Doris, staying staying patient, having a 3-1 count, and able to get a base hit on and bring in the runner. And now tied game. Tyler Brown looks like he's ready to go, and he'll face Noah Nieto first. Nieto lined out to right field his first time up in the first inning and reached on a walk his last time up in the third inning. Still a cold breezy night out here at Kingwood Park High School. First pitch from Brown. Liner in the left center field, it's over the head of the shortstop for a base hit. Doris will hold off at second base. And that's a single for Noah Nieto, his first hit of the night. The momentum just keeps going and keeps going. It was Carson Woods, the one who brought in the run in the first. Peyton Moore will head on over to first base to run for Noah Nieto. Of course, though, if you're the Huntsville Hornets, you can't do what K Park did and leave runners stranded. Even though you tied the game, you gotta ca keep capitalizing on this opportunity. Brown's first pitch to Woods, swing and a miss. Brown just blowing one right by Woods and getting a strike. Woods, his last time up, struck out, but he had an RBI double in his first at bat of the night to drive in the game's first run in the top of the first. 0-1. Slider, rather fastball, excuse me, is high for ball one. Swing and a miss again. The count runs to one and two. I don't think. I don't think Brown has thrown a breaking ball just yet. He's he's just mainly using that fastball so far. Yeah, and it's just been middle middle. It's just been b blowing by. Even if you're late, you just try to still find a way to put the bat on the ball because if you can barrel the ball on a fastball, even if you're late. 
can easily go through the opposite field, infield. Evler setting himself outside, pitch. Called, strike three. And that is two away. So far, all the strikeouts for the Hornets have been looking, and they've all been on the outside of the box. Austin Taylor steps in. He's trying to keep things going here. He struck out looking in his last appearance in the third inning and grounded out to second base his first time up back in the first inning. First pitch swing and a miss. It's that fastball yet again. And time's going to be called. Head coach Justin Jennings is going to have a conversation with Austin Taylor. And I think... Jennings may have saw something in Brown or that. Probably tipping. Yeah. Or with Taylor's mechanics that he's like, hey, you're maybe maybe it's a thing like, hey, you're a little late. Just try to set a little bit more quickly. This guy's throwing a bit more gas than the last guy. Mm -hmm. Which Brown is. He's throwing a bit harder than Hennings was. And his fastball has a bit more movement. 0-1 pitch coming up from Brown to Austin Taylor. Swing and a miss, another fastball. It's 0-2. Woods and Taylor so far not able to get a nick on that ball. Everything's been so far in the middle of the zone with the fastball. I think you just choke up on the bat a little bit so you can get to it quicker. Playing defense here. Oh, two. Way outside, not close. It's one and two. Brown has an all speed pitch that usually works well on the outside when he was warming up. So far, it's just been fastballs. Taylor trying to battle here. Called strike three on the fastball. And now do it for the Hornets. But they were able to tie the game up thanks to a Gage Doris RBI single that followed a one-out triple by Josh Stanley. We're, we have a good one on our hands, folks, as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Hornets looking to try to keep things where they are. At Mid-South Fiber Internet, we understand the importance of quality service. We don't just work here, we live here too. Helping our communities any way we can. Connecting communities one line at a time. Working around the clock for you. We are committed to serving. Committed to our communities. We are committed to you. Mid-South Fiber Internet, local reliable service you can count on. Sign up today at MidSouthFiber.com. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation broadcast network powered by KSAN Sports. 2-2 ball game between the Huntsville Hornets and the Kenwood Park Panthers. Folks, just want to let you know that these two teams will face off yet again on Friday night, just two days away from now. Broadcast will begin at 6.30 p.m. live right here on the 101.7 KSAN YouTube channel. First pitch will be around 7 o'clock. Join me and B. Jake McMichael on the Countdown to the first pitch presented by Bill Ford. As the Hornets look to hope that that match on Friday is a rubber match for the season series. But first, they got to take care of business here tonight. Number 29, Meg Evler. It's been a good one here, and you know, having to adjust to not playing on Tuesday. And switching over to Wednesday, both teams fighting well. Evler now steps in the catcher, the left-handed hitter. Grounded out to first base his first time up and grounded out to first base again, this time just a three unassisted. First pitch from Brady. 
fly ball out in the center field. Johnny Waddell is going back, seems to have a beat on it. He does, he makes the catch for out number one. One pitch, one out. I can't, can't do any better than that. Yeah. Good way to start. That was a strike either way. But you got one down, two more to go. Nolan Kruger now steps in. He is one for two, singled in the second inning and struck out swinging in the third inning. Was Van Brady's first strikeout victim. First pitch. Let's side. Probably try to get Kruger fishing on that one. Brady, 1-0. That one's not even close to a 0. Kruger stepping in, trying to get on base for the Panthers. 2-0, just a bit outside. Was very close, it runs to count 3-0. Lindsay's waiting on deck. That one finds the zone three and one. Yeah, and Brady just needed to see one hit the zone. Try and come back from the count. He goes again. That one finds the zone. Full count. Three, two, one out. Chopper, it was off the end of the battle world foul. He's favoring that outside edge. Do it again, 3-2. Swing and a miss. Foul tipped into Noah Nieto's glove. One away. Two away, excuse me. Got one, two. If you can get three, you can get out of this inning pretty quickly without doing any more damage, without having to pitch more for Brady. Lindsey now steps in. Swing and a miss. Looks like, looks like Brady's feeling it right now. Blowing it right by these hitters. Lindsey reached on a hit by pitch his last time up on a curveball that ran in on him. 0-1. Fly ball out on the left field. Doris going back at the wall and it is off the top of the wall, rolls away from him. He has to get, get to it quickly. Lindsey's taking three, the throw comes in. It's not gonna be in time. It's a two out triple for Jackson Lindsay. Looked like it had a chance of getting out. And now, Kingwood Park all of a sudden has a runner on third. The right fielder number one, Cody Jenkins. Yeah, everything hitting the wall here, <laughs> but so far you have two outs. Just try and breathe, just need to get one. And get out of the end. You know, it looked like that ball may have had enough backspin to keep carrying it, but pitch is low. And it just, just kept going. It just kept going for a little bit, but then all of a sudden it died at the bottom of the wall, which is probably why that ball kicked away from Gage Doris a little bit. Won't O2 out. Runner on third. Curve in the zone for a strike. Jenkins steps out of the box for a moment. 
steps back in, readies himself. He, the eight-hole hitter has a good opportunity right, right here to give Kingwood Park the lead right back. 1-1. One, one. Curveball, another good one, one and two. I throw that pitch again. I don't think Jenkins is reading that pitch very well because he's getting himself ready in time. It's just like, it's like you pointed out earlier, that curveball looks like it's gonna stay at the top of the zone, then at the last second it dips down to the bottom. Yeah, and with it, these curveballs, he can fly out with it and he can get out of here. Say for Van, try and get this in the dirt, get him swinging. Time is called. So far, even though that one triple happened, Brady's been looking in control on the center. Here's the pitch. Fly ball in the left center field. Johnny Waddell looks like he has a beat on it. He does. He makes the catch for out number three. Two out triple for Keenwood Park, but they weren't able to bring him across the plate. Still a 2-2 ball game. Again, folks, we got a good game brewing here outside of Porter, Texas. We'll be right back right after this on the Hornet Nation. Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Weezer Hyundai to get a real deal? And Weezer has been putting those deals together for Texans for 50 years, including the Hyundai Shoppers Assurance Plan and America's Best Warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Elantras, Sonatas, Santa Fe, Tucson, Palisades, and more. All in new sparkling facilities. So make the drive to Conroe today and buy for less. Eight minutes from the Woodlands, exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe, or WeasnerHyundai.com. Your next vehicle is here. Six, seven, eight hitters due up for the Huntsville Hornets as we're about to begin the sixth inning here outside of Porter, Texas. Calling Neil Christian Cortez right alongside me. Christian, I, I, I mean, this is, a, this is a crazy, fun, good game going on here. Even though it's a... Even though what people would classify as a 2-2 game, it's just one of those games where there's been so much that happens in those innings, it's just very intense. Yeah, it's just been a boxing match, just giving one punch here, one another one here, and they've been fighting at it, trying to take the lead. Fortunately, both team, mostly K Park, been leaving uh, runners on base, but just fighting each way with way. But you got Hornets coming up, Van Brady, the pitcher, and now he's facing Brown, which has only thrown heat so far. The thing is, Christian, so far tonight, the six, seven, eight hitters, and if you want to add the nine hitter in Slater, that bottom of the order is a combined is a combined O for seven so far tonight. And I think if you want to win this game, you got to find a way to have your bottom of the order produce something. The only, the only time they've reached base safely was a Johnny Waddell walk back in the second inning. First pitch is popped up on the infield. Van Brady went on first pitch fastball. There's some confusion, but it's caught by the third baseman in Kevin Rios. That's one away, one pitch, one out. I like the aggression of Brady, you know, first pitch, first swing. But different pitcher in the game. Try and see what he's throwing, see how it is, get the timing right. And the thing is, it's like that's how they begin the that's how they began the game was first pitch swinging. That's what Stanley did, that's what Gage did, that's what Nieto did, and that's also what Woods did. He hit that RBI double on a first pitch. So Johnny Waddell now steps in. See if he puts something on the ground to try to get on base. And I believe that's the first slider we've seen from Tyler Brown. That's strike one. Yep, but so far most of these pitches have been middle, middle. Sometimes that's the hardest pitch that hits, that middle, <laughs> middle. It's like me in golf, just can't hit the pin. <laughs> And head coach Chris Buchner is pointing out a light. Hey, 
Knights play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 01. Outside. Brown lost his hat. Like you said, Brown so far has only thrown heat. It's just a matter of can you get the bat on the ball. Two stick count, one one with one out. Liner up the middle, that's easily through for a base hit for Johnny Waddell. What a way to turn the ball right back up the middle. Yeah, perfect. Waits his chance, gets the ball, rips it, and on. Like you talked about, this bottom half of the lineup needs to get going, and that's a good way to start off. Brian Parker Jr., first at bat, had a good knock, just went straight to the right fielder. And then he also had another good one, but lined out straight to the shortstop. <laughs> Just tries to get, just try to get it outside of the infield. Of course, easier said than done. But patience is key. Third baseman in Kevin Rios is playing way off that third base bag. First pitch as a chopper right to Rios. Thought about throwing on a second for one, but he goes to first base. Waddell's trying to outrun all the infielders, and he is out. I don't know about that decision. He probably saw that third base was occupied, and now we'll do it for the Hornets just like that. We now head to the bottom of the sixth inning here in Kingwood Park, still tied up, not two to two. They have their nine, one, and two hitters due up right after this on the Hornet Nation broadcast network powered by KCM Sports. Affordable Plumbing Incorporated in Huntsville is a proud supporter of Hornets softball and baseball. Family owned and operated since 2000, Affordable Plumbing serves the plumbing needs of Huntsville, New Waverly, Trinity, and other surrounding areas. The company is backed by years and years of experience and strives to support the community in a courteous and professional manner for all your plumbing needs. Call them at 936-291-7886. Again, that's Affordable Plumbing at 936-291-7886. Sting them, Hornets! Bottom of the sixth inning, Van Brady is still out there for the Huntsville Hornets. You just got to hope that, that that how that top of the sixth inning ended, you hope that doesn't come back to bite you because one of the unwritten rules in baseball, do not do not make your first or last out at third base. Yeah, you know, tr aggression, Waddell tried to be aggressive, didn't see anyone at third, but they got covered up quickly and got out. Just unfortunate there. But uh, I mean, I you see what you learn from your mistakes. Yeah, I mean, I see what he's trying to do is trying to run to the uh, to an occupied third base bag, and hopefully no one notices it. But it didn't work out. But if you can get them out right here and keep it tied up, heading to the bot to the top of the seventh inning, you got your nine, one, and two hitters due up. But if Van Brady finds himself in trouble. Colton Gilbert is warming up out there in that bullpen for the Huntsville Hornets. Just like the Huntsville Hornets. Next pitch. Ground ball left side fielded cleanly by Slater. Throw on the first is scooped up by Brian Parker Jr. in time for the first out. Yeah, good 5-3 play able to get the first out for the inning. Well, especially since you had the leadoff hitter now do up in Blake Hetman, who nearly went yard on a ball that went to the right center field gap at the top of the wall. Folks, by the way, if you're experiencing some issues, it's not your internet. It's, again, the internet being a little spotty out here. First pitch is high. Hopefully it can uh, correct itself. One zero. Heckman swings and misses. Heckman so far getting on base three out of the three times with Fielder's Choice. Like I said before, got a double off the wall and right. Nearly a home run too. Oh one is a chopper. Stanley moves in, has to hurry. He drops the ball. 
And I don't know if that's going to be an error or a base hit because Heckman is a fast runner. We'll see if they're going to rule that as a hit. And they will. Not the end of the world just yet, though. Let's see what they, let's see what they do with Rios on this one. So far, Rios 0-3 today. Pitch. Runner goes. Throw down to second. Is in time. Did he get him? Yes, he did. What a throw by Noah Nieto. He gets the leadoff runner. Great heads up play, able to get that lead runner out, trying to be aggressive. That's a, that's hard to do because that, that was a breaking ball that was low and away on him. So you got to hurry up, pick pick the ball off the turf. It did hit the turf, 1-0 pitch this line. Stanley moving in, caught, diving play. Some more defensive plays put on by the Hornet defense once again tonight. And it's all tied up still as we head now to the seventh inning in Porter, Texas at Keenwood Park High School. We'll be right back right after this. Hey folks, Clint Mack here with Wiesner Chevrolet in Huntsville. If you've been looking for a great deal, don't look any further than Wiesner Chevy in Huntsville. Come get a crew cab $1,500 truck and take up to $10,000 off the MSRP. We have Chevy tracks as low as $20,995. Do you want to go all electric? We have the all new Bolt EV, Bolt EUV, and the Chevy Blazer. Do you need a heavy duty truck? We've got three quarter tons and one tons in stock ready for you to take home now. Some restrictions may apply, so hurry to Wiesner Chevy in Huntsville and take advantage of these great deals and great inventory or visit us online at WiesnerHuntsville.com. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation broadcast network powered by KSAM Sports. Nine one and two hitters due up for the Huntsville Hornets. We do have a pitch hitter on deck. It's going to be number 11, Cody Hager. Got called up last Friday from JV. Big spot for him coming up, but they must like him against the fastball because this is all that Tyler Brown has thrown. He's thrown about two breaking pitches. And it's, it's what you said, Luke, I mean, not Luke. We just saw Luke Scott from Huntsville Lady Hornet softball. But Christian, it's, they're all middle middle. Yep. But it's such a hard pitch to hit. No, but everyone really just doesn't understand. Like, because as a hitter, you're not expecting a middle, middle fastball, especially at this level. Because, you know, at yeah. college and pros, you can't get away with that all the time. But Brown is, so far, is getting away with it. He's already struck out two batters. I don't know how, to, batter, I don't know how to score that last play. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll fill it out later. Yeah. Pitch hitting for Huntsville, number 11, Cody Hager. We'll see what we'll see what Huntsville can do here with the nine one and two hitters to up like like we mentioned because now if you can get the lead, get some insurance, can definitely bode well for Van Brady if he goes back out there at the bottom of the seventh inning, especially since he'll be facing the three, four, and five hitters for Kingwood Park in the next inning. Hager now steps in. Wind's still blowing as it's dark out here completely. Wind has died down for a little bit, but it's now getting to a kind of a cool evening. First pitch from Brown to Hager is high for ball one. Hager doing a good job just seeing the first pitch, seeing how it is. Able to get a ball there. One oh. Gets it lower into the zone for a strike. It's one and one. Well, one off the hands and foul. Now, 
here, just trying to keep it keep it level. We're not trying to go up on the ball, just trying to keep it level and get through the infield. One, two, pitch coming up from Brown to Cody Hager. Curve ball, and that is outside a good take right there by Hager. Sometimes you're tempted to swing at a pitch like that in a situation where he's been throwing fastball, 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 then comes at you with that breaker. So you got to hand it to Hager. He's been he's working a good at bat right here. No one warming up in either bullpen. Two two. Fastball called strike three on the black. One away. Does send the top of the order up for the Huntsville Hornets. Josh Stanley coming in. Hit a triple into right center field with one out in the fifth inning. And Engage Doris brought him home with a single up the middle to tie it all back up for the Huntsville Hornets. Feels like a playoff atmosphere right now. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Yeah, both sides. Hunt, Hornets side filled up for the fans and the Panthers side filled up as well. It's it, senior night for the Panthers. Brown taking his time. Oh, one. Fastball's way outside for one and one. His heck also keeps falling off. Well, that thing fall, it falls off probably every at bat. Yeah, I mean, he's throwing that, throwing it at 100% effort, no doubt about it. You got the center fielder in Heckman playing to his left a bit more than usual for a center fielder. Might be playing for that opposite field hit. 1-1. One, one. Fouled off the end of the bat, it's one and two. Stanley, just anything close. Get on base by any means at this point. Seventh inning. One, two. Liner over the head of the second baseman and into the right field for base hit. Stanley down one, two, gets on base for the Huntsville Hornets. Even though he was late, it worked. He got on base. He was late last time, got a triple. Stanley just doing a good job, staying back in the box, able to stay level with it and get on base. That's the Hornets' seventh hit of the night. As a matter of fact, both teams have seven hits, and that score remains the same at 2-2. Two -two. We'll see what Doors can do here. RBI single up the middle his last time up. Pitch is a breaker that's low and inside of him. It's 1-0. I would say Ev both Evler and Nieto today have been doing a great job behind the plate. Blocking the balls from getting by. One zero runs high and away. Looks like Brown's sort of losing a bit of tail on that fastball. It's not running. It's not doesn't have that same two seam run that he had when he first came in. And that's something that's something of note because if that fastball runs flat, it's going to be very easy for a good hitter like Gage Doris to read. Fastball runs high again. Throw it on the first. It's not in time. Count runs to 3-0. and oh. Waiting on deck is Noah Nieto. Rio. Outside for ball four. Runners now will be on first and second. 
And the K Park infielders will converge and have a conversation, mainly the middle infielders. And it looks like we might have someone going out to that bullpen for in a moment for K Park, depending on what happens here. Head coach Chris Buchner for K Park is going to bring everybody in on the infield to have a conversation. Of course, last time these two teams met, it was a slaughter in favor of Kenwood Park. They had that one big inning and they just did not let up. The big loss for the Hornets in their second game of district play, especially after they were able to, especially, especially those first three games were just a roller coaster ride in a way because the Hornets beat Porter, who were at the time number 15 team in Texas 5A, at home 4 nothing, And then they lost in a close one against Lufkin where the Panthers came back in that one. And then they got pounded by these Panthers in Cape Park in that next game. And you were there for that, Christian. It's just everything just, it, everything just has a story behind it. And right now this has a lot of material. Yeah, you know, so far, just it always, it's always been one inning for the Hornets that have damaged them, but so far it can be one inning that helps them. Nieto can get a ball up fair. First pitch to him nearly hits them. And Nieto probably telling himself he probably could have just taken that one and make the bases loaded for Carson Woods. It's 1-0 and either way. Curveball breaks to the zone. Middle, and, middle. Yeah, and I think they got crossed up on that one. They're going out to talk, both Evler and the pitcher in Brown. I think you're just looking for anything to the opposite field past the infield to try to give Stanley some room to make a run for it to home. One, one. Curveball finds the zone for a strike, one and two. So far those curveballs freezing Nieto. Yeah, it's, it's again that you have a guy that mainly throws a fastball and then every once in a while drops a hammer on you. You just, can't, you just sometimes not expecting it. And then when you're timing up for a fastball, that break on that curveball can buckle you up. Time's called by the batter in Nieto. So far, Brown curve and fastball. Just keep an eye on that spin. See what you see. But at the end of the day, just try to foul off anything close, especially in a situation like this. One, two. Fastball, fly ball, right center field. Heckman's going back. It is down for a base hit. Stanley scores. Doris hustling around third. Nieto holding up at second. Sliding in. For the two-run lead is Doris, 4-2. You call to call and try and get that opposite hit right there to right center. Down, gets a double, and two runs in. Pay Moore will go out there to pinch run for Noah Nieto. And the Hornet dugout's going crazy. Say dugout, but they're outside of the dugout. I mean, <laughs> you 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 get you what I'm saying. Lead. You get what I'm saying. That's time. That Woods was, faced yes. Brown. Strike out. That was beautiful. That was that was just a beautiful opposite field hit. Just it's just tailed right in the gap. Hit to the wall, perfectly. Huntsville Hornets with the 4-2 lead. Still one out. Runner on second is Moore. He can run for days. 
First pitch to Woods, tying in at the head for ball one. One oh. Fastball in the zone for a strike. It's one one, not but two balls can score. Okay. It's oh one on there, but it should be one one. So that first pitch was high in on Woods, and then that pitch was in the zone for a strike. Holds off on that slider. It's two and one. Would be interesting to see what head coach Justin Jennings decides to do if he still sticks with Van Brady or goes to another arm. Two one. Swing and a miss, looked a little late on that one. It's two and two. Yeah, Brady already going six innings. Curious to see if he tries to bring him in to finish off the game. I mean, he's been dialing up those K Park hitters. Keep the keep the arm out there. See what he can do, and if he's in trouble, bring in Gilbert probably. Two two. Called strike three. That's two away. Now set up Austin Taylor. 0 for 3 so far tonight. Struck out looking his last two times up at the plate. And I think, I think it's again another situation where you just try to go to opposite field. Hopefully it gets through the infield. I mean, Moore, like I said, can run for days. There's a reason why he's out there all the time as a courtesy runner. First pitch to Taylor is a fastball for a strike. Yeah, this type of runner where you can just get a single and he can score. So you can just get something out in the outfield and put it down. You can be up by three. A one. Ground ball right side, it goes foul. So ring the count up to 0 and 2. See what Taylor can do here. Probably just trying to get some contact on the bat. Did he hold up? No, he did not. The ball gets away. Throw down the first to complete the out. And that's the third out of the inning. However, the Hornets take the lead. Four to two, thanks to a two RBI double by Noah Nieto. The Hornets look to close things out here in Kingwood Park. Bottom of the seventh inning, we go. On the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KCM Sports. I'm Kobe Lovell, 2020 world champion header, seven-time NFR qualifier. I'm Ricky Canton, 15-time NFR qualifier and currently hold the world's record in the cap open. I'm Cody Johnson. I'm a platinum recording country music artist, cowboy team roper. And I'm no bull bill, and I sell trucks. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, at least I sell them to the cool people. 4-2 ball game here outside of Porter, Texas in Kingwood Park High School. Now on the mound for the Huntsville Hornets looking to get the save is the right-handed pitcher, number 17, Colton Gilbert. Interesting move, you could, you could say, by head coach Justin Jennings, Christian, because Gilbert has been the Friday night starter for the past couple of weeks, and now he's in on this Wednesday night to try to close things out and get the save. I think either way, though, it's it could be the right decision because 
Brady was probably getting up there in that pitch count. Don't have an accurate pitch count on me whatsoever, and they don't have one on the scoreboard in right field. But I, I guess it makes sense because he's going to have to try to handle the middle of the order against this K Park squad, who are second in district play. Wrist real quick. Look at the upcoming schedule for the Huntsville Hornets presented by Wiesner, Hyundai, and Conroe. They'll face Kingwood Park at 7 p.m. this Friday. Then they have a two-game week set against the Nacogdoches Dragons. Again, all games will be broadcasted right here on the 101.7 KCM YouTube channel that is the home of the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network powered by KCM Sports. Three-hole hitter Michael Santiago now steps in. Right after him is Ada Murray and Nate Evler there do a three, four, five hitters coming up. First pitch from Gilbert is a fastball in there for a strike. You know, bring Gilbert in on a Wednesday night and turn around for Friday. Jennings just try and think right now. Let's try and tie this series up. Try to set up the rubber, rubber match on Friday. 0-1. Oh, Another fastball, it's popped up, it's in foul territory. It's gonna stay in play, Doris moving in. He calls off Slater and he can't make the catch. Brings the count to 0 and 2. Of course, where that, where that wind's blowing from, from left field, it can make the ball die down and probably play tricks on you when it's up in the air like that. But nonetheless, it brings the count to 0 and 2. Santiago's two for two on the night. Got intentionally walked his last time up in the fourth inning that loaded the bases and where Brady struck out Murray to escape that jam. 0-2. That one's high for ball one. One, two. Ground ball up the middle, fielded cleanly by Colton Gilbert. He'll underhand it to Brian Parker Jr. at first for the one, three put out to begin this bottom of the seventh. Great instincts, doing quick, able to go to your left side. One out down, two more to go. I'll send Ada Murray, like I said, he struck out swinging his last time up with the bases loaded. This time, though, he's working with no one on base with one away. First pitch. Sliders outside for a ball. Good pitch, though. Gilbert's 1-0. Fastball. In there for a strike. Good pitch on the inner half of the plate to the right-handed hitter. Another decent slider, but it's outside yet again. It's two and one. Gilbert. Trying to notch his first save in district play. Of course, he was known as, he was the closer last year for the Hornets. 2-1 pitch, fastball in there for a strike. It's 2-2. Two and two. Just trying to keep things where they are right here. Just work at it from one batter to the next. He's working with a 2-2 count, one out to Ada Murray. Pitch. Just low. Full count pitch coming up. Nate Evler due up for Kingwood Park. Last year when the Hornets were here around this time last year, this full count pitch goes. It's a little inside for ball four and Kingwood Park has a runner on with the tying run in the batter's box, and it looks like we'll have a courtesy runner coming in for Kingwood Park. It's going to be number seven, and Cole Webb going out to first base. And 
That'll send Nate Evler to the play. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He grounded out to first base his last time out, grounded out to first base again, unassisted in the third inning, and flew out to Johnny Waddell in center field in his last at bat in the fifth inning. Curve in there for a strike, good start on one. And this is a spot, by the way, that the Hornets have also had trouble with in the past, is closing it out. Yeah, so far right now have one out, but a runner on first to try and get that lead runner. But you have a left-handed batter to even get to second and cause it. Pitch, it's another curve, but it's a little more outside this time. Well, so far the whole game, umpire's been favoring that outside call, got one, wasn't able to get that one. See if he goes back to it. 1-1. One, one. Pop foul into the netting. It's one and two. I wonder if you could probably see Webb go on in this at bat. But I'm pretty sure K Park just wants to try to go from station to station. Just a little high, it evens the count to two and two. Time's called. We just, we pass the two hour mark in this game, or two and a half hour mark, excuse me. Another long game, Christian. It always is. <laughs> well, this has been a good game. It has been great. It's baseball, there's no time limit. Two two, runner goes, popped up in the air. Stanley's moving in, the runner slips. Brian Parker Jr. catches it. He's gonna go step on the bag, and now sealed the game. The Hornets grabbing the road win against Kingwood Park, the second place team in district. They even the season series, and that sets the date for Friday night for the rubber match against this K Park squad. That's your ball game for the two. The Hornets take the win. What a game. The Hornets doing a good job. Keep fighting, keep going. Van Brady going six innings for the Hornets and able to seal it, taking a one to one in the series. Uh, you, I couldn't have said it better myself, Christian. What a game. We'll be right back. The Bill McFord post-game wrap-up comes your way right after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. I'm Kobe Lovell, 2020 world champion, seven-time NFR qualifier. I'm Ricky Canton, 15-time NFR qualifier and currently hold the world record in the cap movement. I'm Cody Johnson. I'm a platinum recording country music artist, cowboy team roper. And I'm no bull bill, and I sell trucks. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, at least I sell them to the cool people. Country music is different than other music genres. Our artists sing about family, friendship, the ups and downs of this old world, and living this life. Country music tells the story of us. 101.7 KSAM is your hometown radio station. Play in today's best country and all your favorites. And you can have this hometown connection right there on your smartphone with the all-new KSAM mobile app. It's in your iPhone and Android app store right now. And we also have direct links on our website. KSAM1017.com. At Mid South Fiber Internet, we understand the importance of quality service. We don't just work here, we live here too. Helping our communities any way we can. Connecting communities one line at a time. Working around the clock for you. We are committed to serving. Committed to our communities. We are committed to you. Mid South Fiber Internet. Local, reliable service you can count on. Sign up today at MidSouthFiber.com. 
Hunt's full wakes up to the all new K Sam Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy. Get a positive start on your workday with local news, weather and sports, and some inspiration and laughs to warm you like a hot cup of coffee. And now you can join the daily conversation with Brian and Tracy by calling or texting the K Sam listener line at 936 295 4102. Come on, neighbor. The all new K Sam Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy on 101. KSAM. Affordable Plumbing Incorporated in Huntsville is a proud supporter of Hornets softball and baseball. Family owned and operated since 2000, Affordable Plumbing serves the plumbing needs of Huntsville, New Waverly, Trinity, and other surrounding areas. The company is backed by years and years of experience and strives to support the community in a courteous and professional manner for all your plumbing needs. Call them at 936-291-7886. Again, that's Affordable Plumbing at 936-291-7886. Sting them, Hornets! Find us on social media on both Facebook and X at KSAM1017. Also be sure to subscribe to the 101.7 KSAM YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything going on with your hometown radio station. Welcome back to the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network powered by KSAM Sports. We're now in the Bill Ford post-game wrap-up. Christian, uh, this it's a low score. It was it's a low scoring game, but it's just one of those games where everything just happened in every inning. It was it, like we didn't know what was going to happen next, and uh, the Hornets were in trouble at one point in that. I believe it was that top of the fifth inning where they had the bases loaded with two outs, and then Brady was able to get that strikeout to get to get out of it, and then the Hornets were able to come back, or excuse me, that was the bottom of the fourth inning, and the Hornets were able to come back the next inning to tie it up. And then that two RBI double by Noah Nieto to give them the lead, and then Colton Gilbert out there getting the save. Just a heck of a ball game for the Hornets. Yeah, it was like a boxing match. Just one punch after another, kept going, kept fighting. And unfortunately for K Park, just leaving runners on base, but Hornets able to take advantage of that. Great job by Brady in going six innings, and just a great job by the Hornets able to get tie the series up. Well, we are going to have our player of the game, Presented by Bill Ford joining us. It's going to be Noah Nieto. Wait for him to get him set up. Noah, uh, I just want to know what was going through your mind in that at bat. You were down, or you were down one two. He was, is that? I mean, that pitcher had had a good zip on his fastball. He was able to keep on zooming it past Bayall. Then he took that ball opposite field to RBI double to. That was ultimately the game winning play. Just uh, just what was going through your mind in that at bat? When I first got up there, I was just thinking, looking for a fastball. That's all I was looking for. He gave me a breaking ball, and I didn't like it. It was down, and then he gave me two more that got called for strikes that I didn't like. But <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't let, I didn't let it affect me. I just stayed with my approach, and you know, he gave me my fastball, and I drove it. Yeah. What do you think of Van's performance tonight? Y'all got, y'all got into a, quite a couple of champs in that game, especially that bases loaded situation in that bottom of the fourth inning. Just. What can you say about your pitcher going out there and getting out of that? Oh, I I love it. <laughs> you know, I know that he trusts me and he and he's got to because if I'm gonna catch him, I mean he's gonna he's got to throw some in the dirt and he's got to trust me. But he had an amazing uh, performance right there. Still think he could have did a little better, but because <laughs> there's always room for improvement. Yeah, of course. I mean, and about you, you you've been improving as well. I mean, you kind of struggled a little bit hitting wise beginning of district play. Then lately, you've been able to you I mean me and you have had this conversation before where you've been trying to find a way to get a bit more under the ball instead of trying to top it too much and you've been squaring the ball up lately just what's what's the grind been uh like over this district season just a lot of my uh, preparation really in the beginning I always struggle with preparation I always just try to go out there and just swing for the fences <laughs> when there's you know there's no reason to swing for it and we just go for a double go for a triple that's what we really need I mean, you got the power, that's for sure. Well, Noah, I'll let you get on going. I know y'all got to go ahead and get out there, but is there anybody you want to give a shout-out to? This is the first time I've gotten you on here. Uh, just shout-out to my family. They always help me and push me through a lot of things. Yeah, for sure. Hey, good job tonight. Thank you. Go celebrate with your teammates. That was Noah Nieto. He is our player of the game, and he manufactured the play of the game. We'll bring back Christian Cortez, uh, see if we'll get head coach Justin Jennings. Christian, uh, just uh, like I said, it was a game that was just at bat by at bat, and the Hornets just were, were the ones that had the better at bats tonight. We uh, we noticed it when we first started, as we get a good old Stingham Hornets by our good friend Luke Scott. 
We noticed at the beginning, they were patient. They were looking at the starter in, in Hennings. And then even though – and then they brought in a new pitcher and they struggled, but they still did not try to do too much. They, you had a lot of call strike out looking to not call strike out looking tonight where on pitches where maybe they were a bit questionable. But either way, I'm pretty sure for head coach Justin Jennings, which uh, we talked about that, about not swinging at the bad pitches. I'm pretty sure that is something that he want, that he likes to see. And I'm pretty sure when I do talk to him next time, he's going to say we're still not playing our best baseball. But tonight you were able to get it done. Yeah, I like it. Never settle for perfection. We're always, always trying to be perfect any game, any time. Never settle. But just like you said, at-bats were real big today. No errors on the board. Doing a great job. And just being patient, like we said. Put anything on the ground. I believe there was only, if I can look at my scoreboard here, two, it's about four flyouts yeah. out of many at bats, putting things on the ground, getting a runner moving. But just did a great job and kept going, didn't leave much runners on base, and was able to get four runs out of that. And this game was supposed to be last night. Um, what, they, there's something that they always say delays always favor the away team, it seems like. And tonight, it, that sentiment proves true. And just, I, I, in my opinion, I think having that extra day of preparation may have helped out the kids at least a little bit more to be like, okay, we still got one, we got one more day to prepare. They kicked our butts last time out when we faced them. We got And we just got swept by Lufkin in the season series. We now have to try to hunker down and try to go back out there and – Break the break the back to back losing streak you were on, and you did it against the second place team in district. Yeah, I know we talked about you win the series against Porter, unfortunately not able to take against Lufkin, but now you have a chance on Friday to take the series against Kingwood Park. Then you play Nacogdoches, try and take that. But I like Coach Jennings. You know he's taking the game at a time. You know bringing in Colton Gilbert, usually your starter on Friday. But you bring him in tonight because you want to try and tie that series so you can get that momentum to Friday to keep it going and win the series. It also puts you in a better position to possibly clinch the playoffs within the next week and a half. You can see the standings right here. Lufkin came to today 9-0. and Don't know the result of the game. They were in, of course, came apart with 7-2 and coming in this one. They're now 7-3. and Porter don't know the result of their game as well. Huntsville moves back to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. And Dayton and Nacogdoches, we're both one and eight coming into today. So depending on what happened with Dayton and Nacogdoches, I think if you're the Huntsville Hornets, you might have just secured another playoff spot. Of course, depending on how Dayton and Nacogdoches go, because of course, just uh, right now it's just a battle of, I think at this point now with Kingwood Park getting their third loss of the season, it's now just a battle probably for that second place spot because it, Lufkin looks like they're running away with the district undefeated potentially. Yeah, I mean, like we said, Porter three, Kingwood two, K Park, and if you take the series both ways, everything going for them. But it's the heck of a game tonight. You know, the wind wasn't quite in their favor. Some calls didn't go their way, but Hornets kept fighting and was able to take the lead in the seventh inning to finish out and go home happy. And now you're looking towards to Friday. Uh, which is just two days from now. You're not, you don't have that. You don't have the normal amount of time off. You have you have just the full day tomorrow, one day Thursday, to prepare. And but right now Huntsville seems to be having all the momentum, especially after getting the win tonight. And might I add, you got a win against K Park on their senior night. Yep, you know, celebrate senior night. Uh, a win on the road is always tough to get especially in tough conditions. And like you said, it favored the away team with the delay. But but your bats got going. Defensively, you did well. While down center, getting balls not many can get. Even though that one ball got to second, uh, got a run for King K Park, Austin Taylor played it perfectly. Yeah. Didn't bring in the other runner from third to get a two-run two lead. And just everything was clicking, everything was working. Kept fighting. Couldn't ask for more. Yeah, we are currently still waiting for Hickas Justin Jennings to get on over here. Uh, still waiting. I'm sure he's still talking to his team. Christian, this is the first time, by the way, you join me in the in the booth. 
So, I mean, you've always been a cameraman uh, for us, and obviously he, you were a cameraman tonight. We greatly appreciate your work. Just uh, just your final thoughts on what you saw here tonight before we uh, – before I hand it over to head coach Justin Jennings, who I think may be heading over here right now. But just your final thoughts uh, on this win tonight. You know, in high school, I played I play tennis. So I'd say this match was just more of just a big rally, just kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it went down to the tiebreaker in the last inning. And the Hornets were able to fight out, get that top, able to get that set and win it all for them tonight. Just a great game. Many people don't like those low-scoring games, but defensively, everything working well, everything great. And just happy to be here getting on the call and and calling such a great game tonight. Yeah, indeed. Still waiting on head coach Justin Jennings. I don't know if he'll be able to come over to us. But, we, of course, we had Noah Nieto on, who was our player of the game and had the play of the game, presented, both presented by Bill Fick Ford. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and wrap things up here on the Bill Ford post game wrap up. Of course, uh, win the night here for the Huntsville Hornets, 4-2. to two. They finish with eight hits, no errors. A lot of runners left on base. I, I don't think I, I don't have a book on me to, to say how many they left on base. And for K Park, they scored two runs. They had seven hits, no errors, and they left many runners on base, especially <laughs> – Christian in that in that fourth inning. Let me see that book actually. Yours is probably much more prettier than mine. Oh, I can't move. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and count. It, let's just say it was probably double digits. They left runners on base. Yeah. And uh, you know we play slow pitch softball, and uh, we're both guilty of it, leaving runners on base. So. <laughs> Don't remind me. Don't remind me. <laughs> play tomorrow. So yeah, just it's a great game. Did a good job not leaving runners on base, like you said for the Hornets. Going home happy. That's what you can ask for. Mm. Well, still waiting on head coach Justin Jennings. He's talking to uh, good old Carlos over there, probably interviewing. Our fellow him. foe. Yeah, our fellow foe, of course. Uh, of course, a great night for Huntsville Hornets sports. J.J. Duke for Huntsville Lay Hornets threw a no-hitter. Chris Carlos Zimmerman and Luke Scott had the call for that game. And uh, you get a win here, 4-2 to two against Kingwood Park. I wonder if they had senior night on – on either side. They did, actually, so they went 0 for 2 on senior night. <laughs> I don't think you don't see that very often. Not in this type of time. Well, but uh, I don't think we're going to be able to talk to head coach Justin Jennings, so it's we're going to go out here, folks. Yeah, it is getting <laughs> cold out here, and I'm sure they want us to get on and get out of here. Folks, final score, Huntsville Hornets 4, Kingwood Park Panthers 2. Tonight's broadcast of Huntsville Hornets Baseball and the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network is copyrighted for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any other transmission or accounts of the game without the express written consent of 101.7 KSAM and Huntsville High School Athletics is strictly prohibited. For executive producer Jordan Smith, Carlos Zimmerman, cameraman, and color commentator Christian Cortez, I'm Colin Neal saying so long for now from Kingwood Park High School. We'll see you back at the Huntsville ISD Baseball and Softball Complex this Friday as the Hornets and the Kingwood Park Panthers will have a rubber match this Friday. Have a good rest of your night, and as always, Stingham Hornets.